All right, let's do it. Let's go live. Mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two. What's going on, folks? Good old Friday night live stream. Y'all know how it goes. Anything's bound to happen. I don't know if we're going to have any guests on today, but you guys know normally there's nothing like a Echoes Friday night live stream. We've had some uh, we've had some pretty crazy ones. We've had some ones for the books. Holler at me if you're in here. I'm trying a whole new setup. The camera situation didn't work out. However, I figured out a way to finally use this green screen so you guys just don't see a wrinkled green screen in the back. Uh, let me know how we doing. I got a new name for you guys, too. Everybody got a name for, like, they crew, a group of people. I'm calling us the Pitchfork Gang. If you don't want that name, that's cool, but I'm calling myself an honorary member of the Pitchfork Gang. We ready with the Pitchforks for all these freaking grifters, these scammers, these liars. And this was one heck of a week. For the grifters and the scammers. By the way, can y'all hear me? Let me see if y'all can hear me. Can y'all hear me? Let me see if y'all can hear me. Oh, yeah, look like y'all can hear me. Yeah, the audio sound good. Yeah, the audio sound good. Audio looks good. I don't know if I like the video quality, but we trying. We're going to see how it go. We're going to see. We're going to see. We might have to go back to the wrinkle green screen. It's up to y'all. Y'all y'all want this or y'all want the wrinkle green screen? I mean, we can switch it up. Somebody said, I love it. The Pitchfork Gang. There you go. Y'all like it? <laughs> that's that's what I'm calling us. Everybody got their thing. Straw Man got his little, his little real crew or whatever, like the real thing, the real rabble. And then, you know, obviously my main signature phrase is spooky alien and making fun of that. But who wants to be called a spooky alien? I can't call nobody a spooky alien. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to call ourselves the Pitchfork Gang. <laughs> we got the Pitchforks ready. Boy, we ready to test somebody up. I think that's a perfect name because normally whenever somebody scams or gets exposed for scamming or I do the research and expose them for scamming, I got the pitchforks ready. Most of the people watch my content got the pitchforks ready. So I feel like we the pitchfork gang. Matter of fact, shout out to Spencer Cornelia. Spencer Cornelia is where I got the. Uh, Spencer Cornelia is where I got the uh, the phrase from because Spencer said that my channel will never grow and blah, 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 because you got the same people with the pitchforks. And I'm like. I like the way you think, Spencer. That's a great name, the Pitchfork Gang. So that's what it is, the Pitchfork Gang. So Steamship TV says he loves it, the Pitchfork Gang. We got quite a lot to talk about. Definitely make sure you all roll in, talk your stuff. I see somebody left a comment, Engineer X. Shout out to you. Engineer X says, what did Engineer X say? What a comment at? Steamship said your main phrase is for crying out loud. You think so? I think my main phrase is between spooky alien and murder she wrote. But now I'm incorporating a new phrase, the pitchfork gang. We the pitchfork gang. Me, Kevin, keep popping out videos left and right. Y'all want to check out me, Kevin channel? Let's go look at me, Kevin channel. Can we be spooky aliens with pitchforks? Sure, you can be spooky aliens with pitchforks. Hold on, let's go look at Kevin channel because... From what I've seen, look like me, Kevin started taking sponsorships again, which who's really surprised by that? Got to pay for that lawsuit somehow. <laughs> critical, critical said, got my pitchfork and torch ready. All right, cool. Look, look like y'all digging the pitchfork game. Look like y'all digging the pitchfork game. So your channel going to be scam slang. I don't know if you're new truth teller. You're probably not. You've probably been on it. You've probably seen this channel before, but just in case you're new, uh, I wouldn't say scam slaying. I feel like that's kind of coffeezilla thing. Uh, what I mostly do is I do a mixture of stuff. We do news on here. We definitely call out. For the most part, the main mission in this channel is to bring accountability to the finance space and call out bad people. That's mainly what we do. Sometimes I do investigations. However, I get really burnt out because after I do the investigations, it would take like days to do. Like the Larry Jones video I made, I still can't believe that video didn't get that many views, but it's all good. Um, that video, I spent so much time researching and just dig in and all that. And then after that, I had to edit it. And yeah, I just got burnt out. So yeah. So to answer your question, I mean, I wouldn't call it scam slang, but am I still going to go after bad people in the finance space and do deep investigations sometimes and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'm going to absolutely do that. That's my thing. That's my thing. That's what we do. Uh, that's the type of content that I'm passionate about. You know, the one thing I really like, guys, about the content that I make, well, the one thing that I really like 
is that I'm literally doing what I want to do. So whether the channel blows up, whether it stays at 10, 10K subscribers for the rest of the year, uh, I don't even care that much. I, I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. I feel like I do pretty good at it and I enjoy doing it. You know, I can't imagine me coming on YouTube and really talking about anything else. I mean, I got a second channel where I talk about like other topics I'm interested in outside of finance, but this is the main thing that like keeps me motivated to turn on the camera and do YouTube videos. You know what I mean? Like that's the main thing that keeps me motivated, knowing that there's so many bad people out there, knowing that people like CoffeeZilla and others, that you, there's so many scammers. You just, you, you can't get them all. There's so many. There's like five of us in this space. <laughs> there's like 50 million scammers. You know, so that's just kind of where it's at. So anyway, to answer your question, uh, yes and no. Do a video on 19 Keys. I thought about it. I want to make a video on Kelly OG. That, that's a freaking scammer right there. That's really who I want to make a video on. I want to do Kelly OG. How y'all like in the background, by the way? Did anybody notice? Ain't nobody said nothing yet. Did anybody even notice that I don't have the ugly green screen? Matter of fact, let me go back so I can remind y'all. That's how that's how sophisticated we've gotten in our setup. I could bring it back. There you go. Would you guys rather this? Do you guys do you guys miss the green screen? Just the just the wrinkled green screen in the background. Let me know because I can easily bring it back. I can I can either leave it like this. We could go back to this. We could do a little bit of this. You feel me? We getting fancy up here. We could do a lot. There's a lot that we can do. Matter of fact, I like this one. We're gonna keep it at this one. There you go. We're going to keep it at this one. All right, let's read some more comments. You guys know I like to read comments before we get into the show. This is the comments is the way the, the live streams are the way for me to like, you know, connect with y'all, talk my stuff, have fun. You guys know most of you guys know how the Friday night live streams go. Sometimes they could be crazy. Sometimes we can have, you know, like we had uh, the last big stream we had. We had Scott Schaefer, Chris Norla and Smith Cornelia. You know, sometimes the streams get crazy. Sometimes we have me, Kevin, on. Sometimes we have Tom Nash on. You just never know. Friday night live streams, you just never, never know. Hi, listening from Montreal. I like your content. like that you're just plainly explaining how you call out people in the finance space. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, that's what uh, keeps me motivated. Keep turning this camera on. Watching from Park City, Utah. Oh, I love Utah so much. I got to go back. I love Utah. I love Salt Lake City. I really do love it there. I love the mountains. I love the downtown. I love the lake. I do not like the Great Salt Lake. <laughs> there were too many bugs. <laughs> but the lake that's in that one mountain I went to, I can't remember what mountain that was. But there's a lake in that mountain. I love going there. Dang, how many of you guys live in Utah that follow me? What the? Do you guys know how many times I go to Utah per year? I go to Utah like three, four times a year. That's crazy. Coffee doesn't slay scams. He nukes them from orbit. Yeah. How do you feel about Caleb Hammer? Uh, in his name, you said Celeb. I think his name is Caleb Hammer. Um, I like his content a lot. I do not like the fact that he works with creators agency, and he does. So that's just kind of where I'm at with it. I do not like the fact that he works with creators agency, but I like him. I'm, I'm not going to be a hater. Like, there's this other YouTuber named Joshua Mayo. I like him too. He's with creators agency too. But I still like him. But yeah, Caleb Hammer, I like. His content is really good. He's the next big finance channel that's been exploding because, you know, one thing I noticed about the finance space, the only way you're going to grow your channel these days is you have to do something innovative. That's what I noticed. So if my channel doesn't grow any further than it already has, because remember last year around this time, I had 300 subscribers. So last year was a big year. The channel like 10 x So that was good. Um. But if my channel doesn't grow anymore, it's because I'm not innovating. Like, if you just look at the two top channels right now that are growing, I'd say King of Nothing, his channel has been exploding, and it's because he innovated. And Caleb Hammer, it's because they innovated. They're bringing different content to the finance space that isn't just the same old, you know. Because the problem with the finance space, guys, is you have the same 100 people in finance. There's all these different finance channels all saying the same thing. Hey, what's going on, guys? Today, the Fed decided that they were going to raise rates by 25 basis points. Like, yeah, no freaking duh. No duh, Sherlock. Like, that's what finance is. That's really what it is. It's the same videos. It's the same thing. It's it's either everybody's making a video on ChatGPT. Everybody's an AI expert. Everybody's making a video on the banks and they're making countless videos. Oh, oh, the spooky alien banks are going to crash the entire federal system. Everybody's going to die. <laughs> they're all making the same stuff. So that's the one thing I noticed. I, I really think that 
if I figure out a way to innovate my channel, it'd probably explode because that's what I'm noticing. All the new finance channels that are exploding, they've innovated. They're bringing something different to the finance space that isn't just the same old, the Fed said this, Jerome Powell did this, Janet Yellen said this, CPI numbers came in here, which means all your stocks are going to go to zero. All just the same bull crap. Nobody wants to hear about that. So yeah, that's my rant. But to answer your question, I do like Caleb Hammer. He has a good channel. Do a video on James Pelton. Who in God's name is that? Shout out to Lincoln. No more green screen. No, sir. We upgrading. We upgrading. We upgrading. Let me tell you guys a story, okay? So I bought a fancy camera. I bought the Sony ZV-E10, whatever it's called. I don't know, something. I bought the Sony, a re really nice camera. It cost about a thousand bucks. And then I had to buy like a tripod and a like a little card. And a, I, I had to buy so much crap for it. But the bottom line is, guys, let me tell you my camera story. So I bought a new camera because I'm like, you know what? I really want to up the quality. And so I went ahead and I got me a camera. And let me tell you guys what happened. Sorry, I'm getting a call. Uh, won't let me end it. So I'll just have to turn the ringer off. So when I got this new camera, you guys won't believe this. I spent $1,000 on a camera. And the camera was not even close to better than my iPhone. Isn't that crazy? Wasn't even close. The iPhone was way better. and. It was so hard and complicated to figure out how to make this camera work. Like, I literally spent, like, I, I literally stayed up all night. You could ask my girlfriend. Like, and I had work the next morning. That's the funny part. When I, the, the same day that I bought the camera, I wanted to figure it out so bad. I stayed up till, like, 2, 3 in the morning. And I literally had to work the next day. But I stayed up till, like, 2, 3 in the morning trying to figure out this camera. And I could not figure out how to get it to be better quality than my iPhone. Now, it's probably my fault because it was a pretty nice camera. And I looked on YouTube and there were other YouTubers who figured out how to make it really nice quality. So I determined that I don't know if it's because I have a green screen or it's because my lighting isn't good enough for the camera. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that the camera did not work out for me. Uh, the iPhone is so much more efficient. I literally just record, edit real quick. All of my iPhone, by the way, upload the video on my iPhone. And I'm good to go. And I, I honestly, life is just easier that way. So the way that I'm going to do it going forward is whenever I decide to really upgrade my content and make it look really, really good, like kind of like how, you know, CoffeeZilla has really, really good camera quality and so does Larry Jones. He has a really nice camera. Uh, who else has a really nice Me, Kevin, has a nice camera too. Whenever I decide to up my quality and get it that good, I'm just going to hire somebody. That's literally what I'm going to do because I suck. And it's sad because I'm 28 years old. I should not be this bad with technology, but I really am. I don't know why, but I am. Like, I could not figure out how to get that camera to be decent. So there you go. So that's the story. So I ended up taking the camera back. I could not figure out how to get it better than my iPhone. And yeah, it is what it is. But the good news is I'm filming on the iPhone right now. However, well, I'm filming on my iPad. However, I figured out a way to get it to the point where you guys don't see this. I figured it out. I figured it out. And I'm proud of myself for that. Steamship says, no, the background is better. Dr. McLovin says you rock, bro. Really appreciate that. Getting fancy with the background. Oh, yeah, we stepping it up. Do Scott's background since he, since he wants to steal your video ideas. Okay, let me let me discuss Scott because I had a lot of crybabies uh, in the comments when I talked about... I, I posted like a... I pinned somebody's comment. I didn't even say anything. Somebody else in the community noticed that he was stealing my videos and they were like... They were like, I can't believe he's doing that and all that. I'm like, yeah, he's he's been doing that for a while. Let me see which background. I think I like this background. Let me talk about that real quick. I want to explain to you guys how serious this is. And, and honestly, I don't even care anymore because Scott's not even the only person who steals my videos. There's other people who uh, take my videos and don't give me credit either. And it's it's whatever. I, I honestly don't even care anymore. It's like whatever. It, it is what it is. Um, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> but I just want to elaborate on Scott because a lot of people think that I'm being petty and I'm really not. I honestly would rather end the beef with Scott. Like I'm tired of beefing with the guy, but the reason why I pinned that comment when the dude said that Scott steals my videos is because, yeah, if you notice the pattern, obviously the, a lot of the stuff that I'm covering is public information. I just happen to mostly, for the most part, find it first. But if you notice, Scott literally makes the exact same video that I make like an hour, or 30 minutes after I make my video. Like he's been doing this for a while. And what and what what proved to me that I know for a fact that he was stealing my content is. I made an exclusive video like a month ago where I said that me, Kevin, knew about FTX. 
And then I posted the interview that I did with me, Kevin, back in July, where he basically admitted that he knew that FTX was crap. Like he knew that something was fishy about it. Scott Schaefer took that video, said everything I said in that video. And then get this. He put the exact same stuff that I put in my video and his video. So like he took the interview that I did with me, Kevin, my exclusive footage, and he put it in his video. While at the same time copying the same video as me. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, you're just being petty. He's it's public information. It's like it's like a lot of you guys who are commenting don't know the history. So that's why I don't really trip or get mad because it's like I get it. Some of you guys are new. I've been gaining a decent amount of subscribers this month. It's been a pretty good month subscribers wise. I think I, I think we gained like 200 subscribers this month. So that's pretty good. And yeah, a lot of the people commenting just don't know. Just like my Scott Shaper video. I can pull it up right now. The video I made on Scott Shaver, which, by the way, that video actually did pretty well views wise. It started off OK, but now it's like done really, really well. Uh, that video right there, there were a lot of people commenting on that video defending Scott. And I'm like, you know what? It's OK. These guys don't know any better. They don't know. Like they have no idea. Yeah, the videos has 6K views now. I'm just like, you know what? A lot of the people who are new don't know all the things that Scott has done and just how much of a weirdo that guy is. But like. Like I said, I'm fine with like squashing the uh, beef. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, select. Hold on. Entire screen. We're going to do that. Oh, oh, that's complicated because I got all this crap installed now. Hold on. Hopefully that works. I don't know if I did it where you guys can hear audio, but I don't think we're going to play anything yet anyway. Uh, anyway. Oh. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, there we go. You guys should be able to see that. I can't see you, though, and I don't really like that. That's not good. But you guys should be able to see this. You guys should be able to see this, so. Okay, whatever. Back to the comments. I'm still learning this new system that I got going on, so we're, we're doing what we could do. All right, let's see. I'm sure we got people on here who got something to say, you should get a Jeremy LaFoufou background in the TCCF file. Maybe. That's right, folks. Thumbs up. Don't forget to like the stream. Let me take this away. I don't even like this. I like it better when the camera's on me. It's way better. Question about creators agency. Just leave or are they stuck under contracts for a time frame? Uh, yeah, I can tell you how it works. Uh, the way it works is they can pretty much leave whenever they want. Um, all creators agency does. They, they might sign a contract, but if they do, all they're signing a contract with is they're signing a contract with creators agency for a certain brand. That's all that they're doing. That's literally all that they're doing. So it's not even necessarily a contract with creators agency. It's just like creators agency finds them a deal and then they sign a contract with creators agency and the brand kind of thing. You know what I mean? And basically, a creator's agency takes a cut, and they pay them whatever they pay them. But yeah, they can leave whenever they want. Like me, Kevin left creator's agency. Me, Kevin's not with creator's agency no more. He left. They could absolutely leave. But they're not going to leave because they're greedy, and they're making a crap ton of money. So why would they leave? Why would you leave the agency that's getting you paid $5,000 per video for a sponsorship? Like, why would they leave? You know these guys are greedy. You know how it goes. I love how all stock pickers move to finance news. Yeah, Lincoln, that's the next big grift. Uh, they moved to finance news because once picking stocks stopped being hot because their audience started to catch on that they're terrible stock pickers, they just started doing finance news because, yeah, that's the new hot thing. Instead of talking about stocks, just continuously make fear content and tell everybody that they're going to die and Jerome Powell's going to take all your money and all this crazy foolishness. Let's see. You should do something like Brett Cooper from the Daily Wire, but with finance. Who is Brett Cooper? I don't even know who that is. Brett Cooper. Who the heck is Brett Cooper? I'm looking at it. The comments section with Brett Cooper. Oh, I can tell. I'm looking at her channel right now. I can tell you right now. The reason why her channel is doing so well. Look, her quality is amazing. See, that's the thing that I need to do. I really need to up my quality. Her quality is incredible. Like her quality is incredible. She has a very nice camera, very nice background. Yep, that's really all it takes. You get that, your channel will blow up. 
Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It's the lens quality echoes. Is it? Is that the mistake I made? I didn't get a good lens. It's because you use the standard lens with it, bro. Oh, now you tell me. I told you I'm just going to pay somebody. I'm literally just going to pay this guy. I'm just going to pay. I'm just going to pay Lincoln to help me with this. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to pay Lincoln to be like, all right, man, here's some money. Tell me everything to do as if I'm an idiot. That's literally what we're going to do. He just got a better lens. Bro, what? He returned it? Oh, yeah, absolutely returned it. You're going to spend about 2K for camera total for camera and equipment, 500 bucks for lighting. I'm fine with spending 2K. The problem is once I spent all the money to get the camera, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. It's so complicated. It's not easy. And iPhone is easy. With my iPhone, I just turn it on and I turn on my lights and we're good to go. The camera is so complicated. You have to do all these settings and all this crap. It's ridiculous. I'm waiting for you to go in on a master investor. Yeah, I got to start my research project on him. I'll get to him eventually. He has the lighting. Yeah, the lighting is good. My lighting is really good. It, I do I do need a better lens. It is the lens. Maybe you guys are right. I told that man, see, you're talking nerdy. I told that man to get a 15mm Sigma lens. I'm just going to pay you, Lincoln. That's just how we're going to do it. Shout out to Orlando Minor. He says this is YouTube, baby. I'm not sure what he's talking about, but okay. He's saying, this is YouTube, baby. Get a better camera. I'm always late in the chat. He's probably talking about, he's probably talking about something else, but who knows? I have no idea. I'm so late. What is it? 60? Yeah, I'm like five minutes late in the chat. Just write the camera expense off on taxes. Oh, you know, I'll be doing that. Do you think Kelly OG is actually a millionaire? No, I think she's lying. I think Kelly OG is absolutely lying. Matter of fact, let's go watch some Kelly OG, guys. She, she is such cab. Let's make fun of Kelly OG. Hold on. I, I need to get this screen out and put it back because I want to make sure the audio is there. Let's see. Okay, nope. I want to make sure I share where you guys can hear the audio. Hmm. Yeah, that's so weird. Before, it used to let me... It must be because I'm an OBS, but it used to let me choose to like allow audio. Hopefully the audio works. I mean, we'll see. Let me show you guys Kelly OG's latest video. It's ridiculous. Like she's such cap. Here we go. She said, I bought my parents a $1 million house at 20. $1 million house at 20, guys. Let me know if you guys can hear. We're, we're going to watch a little bit of the video and make fun of her because she's just crazy. We'll make fun of Kelly OG a little bit. Here, I'll go back here real quick, read some more comments. But, yeah, we're going to make fun of her because she's such a liar. But, yeah, no, I don't think Kelly OG is a millionaire. No, I do not think. Uh, I think she's one of the worst human beings in the history of finance. I think she's an absolute scammer and a grifter. And there's some secret information that I'm discovering about her in my research, but I haven't confirmed it yet. So we we gonna see. Uh, I've been digging into her. I gotta follow her. I already got some stuff on her, but I want to make sure I really take my time with her because I really want to like end her career because she's or just expose her. I don't want to say end her career, but just expose her because yeah, she's an absolute fraud. And it's sad though because, you know, with Kelly OG, it's sad because. I just feel like she's one of those people where anybody with common sense should be able to see that she's a fraud. Uh, let me give you guys the rule of thumb, okay? Here's the rule of thumb. Whenever you see somebody that's flaunting all this stuff, and I'll and I'll put the screen back on her. I'll go, we'll go back to we'll go back to her. Whenever you see somebody, let me uh remove the comment. Whenever you see somebody, guys, that's doing stuff like this, I bought my parents a one million dollar house at age 20. And then where's the other one? She says she bought her dad like a Lamborghini or something. Uh, Lambo. We're going to find that video. Yeah, I surprised my dad with a Lamborghini for Christmas. Keep in mind, a Lamborghini is like a $200,000 car. Keep in mind, she's claiming that she's only like 19, 20 years old. Here's the rule of thumb, guys. And there's another guy who does the same bull crap. His name is Sebastian Giorgio or whatever. Yeah, here he is right here. This guy's the same way. 
He claims that he has a Lamborghini at age like 22 and all this stuff. But here's the thing. When you look at these people's channels, you know it's not from YouTube because look, I'll show you right now. Some people do have a lot of money from YouTube. Don't get me wrong, but I don't even think she makes that much money. She only has 141,000 subscribers, which I mean, that's okay, but she doesn't post that much. She literally posts one video a week and she's not even getting that many views. Like she posts like one video a week. Her views fluctuate. So she's not making a killing off that. And yes, yeah, she sells this course called Cash Capital, which we could go ahead and look at that. She sells a course called Cash By the way, let me know if you guys can hear this. Can you guys hear this? Let me know. Let me know if you guys can hear this, please. Can't hear it? Okay. I'm glad you said that. So. Yeah, see, I don't know how to make the volume work because I'm on a new thing. We're gonna have to normally when I when I click to add the uh camera, it, it just lets me add the like it lets me add the mic or whatever. I don't know, however you say it. For some reason, I can't do it though. Why is that? That's so weird. Okay, let's try again. We're gonna go to present. Um yeah, that's crazy. You guys can't hear it. That sucks. So I guess I guess I won't be able to share the screen. It is what it is. I don't know how to do it. Because it says here, select window for the screen. It used to say share audio volume or whatever, like share audio, but there, there's not even an option to do that anymore. Yep, that sucks. Well, there you have it. Maybe there's a way I could figure it out. No. Nope. Okay, well, oh well. Guess we won't be watching that. We'll be watching it on mute. <laughs> It's all good. We we just won't. I'll just be talking while we're doing our thing. So here's what she sells. Back to what I was saying. So this is what she sells. She sells this thing called Cash Capital. This is like her course thing. But I know for a fact she's not. There's no way she's making that much money from this thing because her following isn't even that big. Like I can understand how me Kevin's making a lot of money from courses because he has a huge following. To me, her following just isn't that dang big for her to be a multimillionaire from this. But yeah, this is like her prices. She's charging 75 a month, 99 a month, 149 a month, 199 a month. I just don't see it. Her entire team is like a bunch of kids, which is absolutely hilarious. Everybody in her team is like under the age of like 22. Look at this, a bunch of kids. There's a bunch of kids running a, a, a freaking fake guru trading group. Yeah, I'm going to teach you guys how to trade options and stocks. Nobody in here is the age of 30. Nobody. They're all kids. And then look at this. This is an absolute joke. A sports betting analyst. What the hell is a sports betting analyst? What the hell? Technical analysis specialist, trading specialist. This dude looked like he, I don't know, he looked like he in his 20s. Like, it's just funny. And who the heck is this? Head of support. Yeah, he looked he looked like an IT guy. He, he sure do. He looked like the damn head of support. <laughs> Let's see if she offers refunds. Oh, she doesn't even offer refunds. Look at that. Freaking clown. If you read the disclaimer on our website, you will see that we do not offer refunds for the sole purpose of respecting the time that we blah, blah, blah. That should automatically screen you scam. But anyway, back to what I was saying. This is the trick people fall for. If you find somebody that has this perception that they have a lot of money and you have no idea where they have where they're getting this money from that should automatically be a red flag to you you should be asking yourself if this person is so rich why is it not easy for me to to know how they have so much money because they're probably a scammer for example if we look at some of these other bigger youtubers i know me kevin has money because i know exactly how he got his money because it's really obvious to figure out because he has 1.8 million freaking subscribers and he sells a thousand dollar course if you look at other people like celebrities like somebody's like I don't know, like some of these like actors. Okay, they have a lot of money because they're an actor. They have a lot of money because they're a ball player. You know, why does uh, Vlad Tenev have a lot of money? Because he's the CEO of Robinhood. It's a billion dollar company. People like this, we have no idea where she's getting her money from. If you're able to, you have so much money that you could buy your parents a million dollar house at the age of 20, it should be obvious to me where she got her money from, but it's not. It's really hard to figure out. Now, the funny part is if you talk to her on how she has a lot of money, because it says it right here, 
how I made six million five hundred thousand six point five million dollars at the age of twenty. So I actually, so I actually watched this video. I don't know why the ads are up. I have YouTube Premium. Oh, it's because I'm not signed in. Okay, whatever. So she has a video called "How I Made Six Point Five Million Dollars by the Age of 20. Well, when you watch this video, she mostly tells you that it's because of trading, but we know that that's a lie because she said that she started with like, like ten dollars or something. How much money did she say she started? started with i forgot how much she said but it's like you're just a freaking liar like this girl is such cap here it is here it is how i turned 26 dollars into twenty thousand dollars. so she started off dirt poor broke she started off with only 26 dollars, but now you have 6.5 million dollars and it's not obvious for me to figure out how you have that money. It's cap. I'm calling cap. It's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna call Fizilla this girl. It's just gonna take me time to dig everything up, but I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna get her. Don't y'all worry, I'm gonna get her. She's an absolute scam. No doubt about it. Her fans will defend her to the death. They said she has expertise, and I asked what expertise. They said two years of trading experience. Exactly. Clown world. How are you qualified to teach somebody how to trade stocks and you only have two years of experience? And keep in mind, her two years of experience happened to be in the greatest bull market we've ever seen in our lives. So her two years of trading experience was in a bubble, literally a bubble, when a bunch of crazy Kathy Wood spooky alien stocks like BNGO and space, I don't know, what are those space, Virgin Galactic and Roku and all that went to the moon. Upstart. It's like, come on, bro. People love that type of content with the Fortnite font. Huh? Where we live, that house is probably $2 million. Well, she's in Texas. She lives in Texas, and I'm sure that house is in Texas. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to... Who is your next guest going to be? I don't know. You never know. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I have no idea how I'm able to get these people on my channel. I don't know. I guess it's because I talk crap about it. I don't know. When Spencer messaged me and said he wanted to come on my channel, I was shocked. I was like, wow, that's crazy. But okay, I'll take it. I was I was shocked. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know who the next guest is gonna be. Hopefully it's somebody cool. Uh, I'll give you guys a disclaimer. I've sent messages out. Like I tried to get the I tried to get BitBoy Crypto on my channel. I uh messaged him on Twitter, he never responded, but I tried to get BitBoy Crypto on here. So maybe if he responds, maybe Big Boy Crypto will be the next guest if he ever responds. Bruh, sports betting analyst. I know it's clown world. It's freaking clown world. Got to get a spell checker going on that page. Exactly. Miss spellings. It's, it's just clown world. She's scamming. That's the cool thing to do, unfortunately. A lot of these influencers got money from COVID stimulus, bro. The drop shippers got a ton of money, even if not profitable. The government gave you money based on revenue, not on profit. Yeah, but they didn't give you that much money where these guys became millionaires unless you like scammed off the PPP money or something. The Island Boys got free loans and used that money to go viral. Yeah, maybe. Gil says she probably rents Airbnb and cars and acts like she owns them. Yeah, just so you guys know, I'm going to tell you guys something interesting. So this Lambo, I'll put the screen back up. This Lambo that she bought, let me take the comment away. This Lambo that she bought, I actually found out, she actually bought it from another influencer. So that makes me think that she probably rented it right here. This, I bought a Lamborghini for my dad. Okay, that those ads are getting annoying. So hold on, we're going to unshare my screen. I'm going to log in because those ads are really annoying. And I have YouTube premium, so I shouldn't be I shouldn't be suffering. Once you get YouTube premium, you can't stand the ads because like, yeah. So let me just get that. OK, good. I got that out, out the way. OK, we're good. Now I can share. We don't have to worry about annoying ads anymore. So, yeah, this Lambo right here that she bought for her dad, she literally bought it from an influencer. So it's not like she like went on Carvana or went to the shop or actually got it from the real Lamborghini shop. She got it from like this sketchy influencer who looks like he bought his followers so it's like she probably did rent it to be honest probably 
You should focus on the bigger fish. No one knows her and people who believe her are idiots. I agree. I should focus on the bigger fish. However, I also make content that I really think I that I want to make and I think is important. And honestly, even if that video doesn't get any views, whatever. I mean, the Larry Jones video I thought was one of the best, best videos I ever made. And that video didn't get any views. So, hey, it is what it is. But uh, I want I want to make a video on her. So I will. I'm going to do it because I want to. Since you mentioned Upstart, I'm calling their bankruptcy. It's coming. Uh-oh, you think so? Yeah, a lot of the companies that did really well in the bull market, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of them going bankrupt. I mean, look at Tattooed Chef and Giannis Company. Like, not looking too good. Get Jeremy on. I'll be shocked if he ever did one. I don't think I'll be able to get Jeremy on. I'm going to tell you why. Jeremy knows he's a scammer. Jeremy won't come on because he knows it. Like, Jeremy knows. That's the thing. Jeremy actually knows who he is, so he won't come on. He's not going to come on and incriminate himself because he knows he's a scam. <clears throat> I would love to see Coffeezilla do a full deep video, deep dive video on Jeremy. Because honestly, to be honest with you, out of all the grifters, Jeremy is Jeremy's really one of the biggest scammers. And he's one of the easiest ones to prove, too. Like, it's really easy to actually prove that he's like a legit scammer. Like, he's a legit grifter and scammer. Like, legit. Wouldn't be surprised to see the SEC get him. Maybe they won't because he hasn't he didn't promote too many cryptos, but they should. They definitely should. She rented a Lambo for her dad for today and titled the video that she bought one for him. LOL. Yeah, Slurpees. That's what I think too. That's why I said I'm gonna do some digging and see if I can figure out if like her dad actually owns that Lambo or not. I'm gonna do some research and figure it out. But yeah, I, I think it's obvious that she rented that house and she rented that Lambo. No doubt. <clears throat> if I wanted to scam people, I'll rent a house and supercar. Yeah, that's the new thing. Just rent it and act like you own it. It works every time. <laughs> Dan Weston says, Echoes with a fancy background. What is this magic? Looks like you guys are liking the background. I appreciate it. Let me switch it up. I'm going I'm to bring the bookshelf one back. Yeah, we're, we're stepping up the quality a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. We're trying to be better. This is the one I use in my videos. And if you guys are wondering why I'm not wearing a suit or dress clothes, it's because I'm not going to dress up in dress clothes to do a several-hour stream. It's too hot. What do you think I am, investing with Cole? That's the type of things he does. Not to me. Kelly OG is the type of person that will stay in an Airbnb and say she bought the place. Yeah, that, that's really what I think she's doing. That's the funny part. Jeremy will only come on if you basically dick ride him <laughs> like a mitt. Yeah, yeah. That Amit video was pathetic. Well, Amit's a pathetic YouTuber, so you know what? I haven't checked out Amit in a while. Let's see how he's doing. He's a pretty pathetic YouTuber, in my opinion. I mean, he literally just makes endless videos on Palantir. Like, that's pretty pathetic to me. And it's been working for him. Like, he gets a crap ton of views just talking about Palantir. Look at this. Oh, look. See, now we get to see what happens when he doesn't make a video on Palantir. Now we get to see how many followers he really has. That's the one thing I noticed about Amid. I went into, I went into Amid's Discord to troll him. I was so shocked by how dead it was. You have 16,000 subscribers and you're... Your freaking uh, Discord chat is so dead. But yeah, look at Amit's content. He made a video called The Fed Did What They Had To Do, right? 300 views. The man got 300 views and he has 16,000 subscribers. I'm telling you, his channel's trash. Look, he made a video on Coinbase. Can't even get views. Trash. I have less subscribers than him and my video on Coinbase got literally double the views. It's sad. And he has way more subs than me. Now, look how many views he gets on his Palantir videos. That's what I'm saying. It's He's a pathetic YouTuber. Look at it. Look at this. Palantir video, 2K views. Kathy Wood, eh, that's okay, I guess. TikTok, he made a video on TikTok, 500 views. If I made a video on TikTok, I could easily get at least 1.5K views, at least. Like, I could at least do better than that. I bought a new stock. Okay, decent. SoFi, okay, he'll get views on SoFi because he built a community on that. Any video he makes on SoFi and Palantir gets views. So look, Palantir, 1.8K views. This guy is pathetic. 
See, look, he made a video right here. The dirty jobs Facebook and Google don't want. 600 views. Palantir again, 2,000 views. Palantir again, 2,000 views. Holy moly, he got 7.5K view. Uh, yeah, 0.5K views on another Palantir video. I'm telling you, he only gets views on Palantir videos. Look at this. Congrats, Palantir. 8,000 views. It's crazy. He literally only gets views on SoFi. For me, I can't respect a YouTuber like that. I think it's pathetic. And I agree. I think he I think he does a lot of a lot of slurping. You know, he does a lot of dick riding on the bigger YouTubers. Like he was dick riding me, Kevin, so hard. Oh my God. Matter of fact, he actually copied me, Kevin, because Amit actually does market open and closing live streams. And when he got me, Kevin, on his uh channel to do an interview with him. He basically told me, Kevin, oh, yeah, man, you inspired me to do market open and closing live streams. I love you. And me, Kevin, just looked at him like, okay, like you fucking weirdo. Like, it's just weird. He's a weird dude. Like, look at him. Look at him. What the fuck is this? This is the one thing I told you guys about finance. I wouldn't be surprised if certain things came out about some of these people. And I'm going to just leave it at that. I ain't going to say nothing more than that. I'm just telling you guys the honest truth. Some of these people in finance are freaking weirdos. You could just tell. They're just weird. They're all weird. You know, they're just, I ain't going to go no farther. You guys know what I'm saying. I just know if certain things came out, wouldn't surprise me. Some of these people are weird. Like this guy is a straight weirdo. Look at him. Just look at him. Who takes pictures like this? Why would you take a picture like this right here and put it as your thumbnail? You look like a weirdo. You guys know what I really want to say. You know what he really looked like? He looked like somebody that's going to have some allegations against him in a few years. You look weird. Why can't you take a picture smiling? Or, I don't know, go back to the pictures with the fire behind you. You look weird. Look at this. People in finance are weird. He's a weird dude, man. He's a weird dude. I don't know. And then he has this like little podcast with his like weirdo friends. He has a little weirdo friends podcast. Like, who are these people? I know who this guy is. I actually like this guy. This Chris Patel guy. What is this? Okay. This Chris Patel guy I like. But who the heck is this? And who the heck is this? By the way, he had a show called The Daily Cowboy. I see Tom Nash left him. That was funny. Now he's got some weirdo that nobody knows. He literally has some weird dude that literally nobody knows. Like, who the heck is this? Let's go to the latest episode. Who is this guy? Who is this? He's, you know what Amit does? I will give Amit his credit on this. He is the king of bringing nobodies on his channel. He will literally bring a nobody on his channel and make them relevant. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He will really do that. He will really do that. I'm just now noticing that you guys can't even see me. Hold on. Yeah, you guys are writing in the chat. You guys are writing in the chat exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but that's really what I think. That is really what I think, guys. Like, I, I'm just keeping it real. You guys know how the live streams are. We just keep it real. We don't we don't sugarcoat. We just tell the truth. I, some of these guys are going to have allegations against them. Like, they're weird. Like, look at Jeremy, bro. Let's, let's go look at Jeremy. Let's go look at Jeremy and his creepy faces. Like, like, would it really surprise you guys? Would it really? Some of these people are weird. Look at him. Look at this. The stock market. Oh, my God. Look at this face. The stock market is drunk. Like, I'm telling you right now, I would keep my kids away from these people. Hide your kids. <laughs> like, look at them. <laughs> Tell me they don't look like weirdos. Hold on, bro. You're telling me this guy doesn't look like a straight weirdo. Be honest. Would you bring your kids around this weirdo? Would you? You see this weirdo at a park just walking around. Matter of fact, you at the grocery store with your kids and you see this weirdo going around sniffing tattoo chef aisles. Would you bring your kids around that dude or would you call the freaking police? If I saw this weirdo at the grocery store with this creepy face, I would call the freaking cops. Like, like, what are you doing? You freaking weird. Go back, go back to the creepy little weird place you live because you're weird. Who makes faces like this? Tell y'all, it's going to be allegations. It's coming. I don't know how familiar you guys are with the trick, with the Twitch streamers and like the, the, uh, the influencer community, but like there's already been allegations against like so many different YouTubers. 
some of you guys who are OGs who've been watching YouTube for a while, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, think about like that guy Dream. There's this guy named Dream who's like a Minecraft guy. And there's allegations against them. Like I'm telling you, some of these weirdos on YouTube, some of these influencers are weird. And every time the allegations come out, I look and I'm like, it doesn't surprise me. Like, I'm like, really, you guys couldn't tell that that guy was a weirdo? Like, look at him. Just look at him. Like, I hate to be that person, but there are just some people that you could just look at and just kind of tell. They're, 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 a little, they're a little off. They're a little weird, you know? Like, they're a little weird. Like, they, they, just, they just, the way that they carry themselves or act or look, it just... You could just tell that they're weird. Like certain things just wouldn't surprise me. Like, look at him. Let's look at some more of his weird faces. Look at him. Look at look at this. Look at this creepy face. Look at this. He don't look like a weirdo to you. Bro, if I see this dude in person, I'm calling the FBI. Look at him. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I, I'm just telling the truth. Get mad if you want. I keep it real. Gil said, LMA, yo, 370 views. It's pathetic, isn't it? It's pathetic. Like, I know I don't get the most views in the world, but at least most of my videos get 1,000 views. And I know some people say, oh, you just talk about other people. Actually, I don't. Actually, sometimes I make videos on other things. See, look, I made this video. I didn't talk about other people in that video. That video did decent views. This video, I got decent views. Silicon Valley Bank, I got a thousand views. Let's go look at Pathetic Emit. Let's go laugh at Emit. Let's go, let's go look. You should never ever in your life get 300 views with 16,000 16, subscribers. Look at this, pathetic, pathetic. The Fed did what they had to do, right? You're even, first of all, you're making a video on the Federal Reserve and you're getting 300 views. You should be getting way more views. Retail investors love hearing content about the Fed. They love it. If you make fear content telling people that they're going to die and the Fed's going to come and steal all your money from your bank account, that those videos normally get views. I don't know why, but they do. The few videos that I've made about the Fed got views. They just do. So the fact that you have six, you almost have 17,000 subscribers, you freaking bum. You freaking weird bum. And you only got 300 views. And then your other video got 600 views. You pathetic bum. Just delete your channel. His channel is only good for one thing, and that's Palantir. And I can't wait till Palantir fails. When Palantir fails, his channel's going to fail with it. His channel's going to fail with it. It's sad. It's sad. And, and again, and again, I, I'm not saying I get the most views in the world, but I get more than 300. If I got 300 views on a video with 10,000 subscribers, which I have, I would delete my channel. I'd be like, okay, I'm pathetic. Like, that's pathetic. You have 10, you bro, he has 16,000 people that subscribe to his channel. 300 out of those 16,000 people said, eh, I guess I'll watch this video. Pathetic. He's built up a crazy cult of Palantir weirdos who only want to see Palantir content. I would hate to have a channel like that. The type of channel that I want to have, I want to have a channel where people appreciate me for me. And people think that I'm so honest and I make such decent content, I guess, that when I make videos on certain subjects that they care about, they'll watch. I don't want to build an audience. I would hate to have an audience where they only want to hear me make one thing. Like, I can only make videos on Palantir. That's all they want to hear. That's literally what this guy did. He He's created an entire fan base of people who only want to hear about Palantir. Well, what if Palantir goes bankrupt? What if one day everybody just decides to stop investing in him? What if one day the CEO just says, hey, I think we're going to go back to going private. Like, what are you going to do? Like, he better hope to God that something bad doesn't happen to Palantir. His channel will be gone. His followers don't want to hear anything else from this guy. They just want to hear about Palantir and why it's going to 20X and make them all millionaires. They don't give a crap about what he got to say about Jerome Powell. They don't give a flying crap about what he got to say about Coinbase. They just don't care. God, my screen wasn't even shared this whole time. I'm an idiot. Okay, there we go. Anyway, back to what I was saying. So, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. It really is. Oh, hold on, let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. It's just crazy. Look at this. Look at this. How do you make a video on TikTok and get 500 views? Who else do we got to make fun of, guys? I'm ready to make fun of people today. Making fun of people is fun. You know what? Let's talk about Strongman. Strongman been on my mind. Did Strongman just become a full-time YouTuber? 
This man has been putting out more videos than me, Kevin. Oh, look, there's me. Bro, look at how many videos he's been putting. He's been going crazy. Look at this. Look at this. What? Look at this. One day ago, this man put out one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go look at the live streams. Uh, seven, eight, nine. He put out nine videos yesterday. <laughs> Jesus, dude. I think Starman just randomly became a full-time YouTuber, guys. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see how many videos he did today. One, two. Okay, he only did three videos today. But I'm telling y'all, the last few days, this man has been going nuts. He's been making so many videos because I have notifications on for him. I think you guys see it. Yeah, yeah. I got notifications on for him. So I'm just like, Jesus, dude, how many videos are you going to put out? I think I think Starman became a full-time YouTuber, guys. I'm not joking. I really think Strongman might be a full-time YouTuber. I really think that might have happened. Uh, you guys know I like Strongman. He's a friend of the channel. But I think he became a full-time YouTuber. Yeah, okay. People are talking about a mitt. Is it just me or is Kevin's channel dying also? Kevin's channel was dying. Let me go to a gill. Kevin's Kevin's channel was dying, and then he uh he re, he he uh he started getting views again. His channel was dying though. That's why he got this little fancy editor. Now, did you guys did you guys see his recent video? He has this really like fancy edited video. I'm like, dang, who the heck edited that? That's really good. Let's see. Let's see. Let me go to uh, let me go to his channel. Keep in mind, these uh, these actually are really bad views for 1.8 million subscribers, to be honest. So I guess you actually can't kind of argue that his channel is dying. This SEC Coinbase video did well. Yeah, see, this is what I'm saying, guys. I told you guys, Jerome Powell videos normally get a lot of views. Look at it. Look at this, Jerome Powell. I'm telling you guys, retail, regular YouTube, regular people who go to YouTube for financial advice, they love Jerome Powell videos. Tell me all about how the Fed is going to take all my money. <laughs> they love it. The coming explosion of Bitcoin. Oh, man, I made a video about crypto, guys, and I had so many crybabies in the comments. They were so butthurt because I told them that uh, crypto regulation is coming. They got so mad. This video right here, the end of crypto. Oh, my God, I had so many crybabies in the comments. It was so funny. I'm like, wow, what a bunch of crybabies. All right, back to some comments. Chris Patel is cool, peoples. Lost boatloads of money on unprofitable share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that Vitaly guy looks like a clown. Yeah, Chris Patel is a decent guy. I like him. He's a decent guy. Let's see. What y'all got for me? We got some interesting things to talk about. Linda is in the building. Echoes. What's up, Linda? How you feeling? Linda says, I trust you 100. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone bragging about how much they have ignored unless they got receipts? Facts. Imagine relying on Palantir communities to support your channel is kind of sad. It's very sad. It is very sad. What video did he do on you? I asked Strawman for tax advice, and he decided to make a video on it. That, that, that's why he made that video on me. Strawman has to keep up with inflation. You guys are funny. Strawman has two to three hours of free time. He don't edit his videos. Yeah, by the way, just so you guys know, uh, I was talking to somebody. I guess I won't say his name because he probably doesn't want me to say his name. But somebody reached out to me. They have a smaller channel than me. I'm going to tell you guys the interesting thing about Strawman. Strawman is honestly an anomaly when it comes to YouTube. And I mean that in a flattering way, like not dissing him at all. Strawman is uh, very entertaining. And that's why his channel is doing so well. But Strawman is an anomaly because like when it comes to like the actual like quality, it's actually bad. And I'm, I'm going to explain it. Hear me out. Because... I had a smaller YouTuber who asked me, they were like, how do I grow my channel? Because their channel is like much smaller than mine. They have like less than a thousand subscribers. 
and they watched me in Strawman. And I explained to them, I was like, well, you know, you got to make you got to make better content. That's that's really the ultimate way to grow your channel is just make better content. If your content is good, your channel will do well. That's literally what I said. Like, that's the ultimate way. Make better content. Then once you, the content's good, then we can focus on better titles, better thumbnails. But content is number one. And then when I said that, they were like, well, what about Strawman? He has a really good channel. And, you know, how was he doing that? Because he's not putting any effort into editing. And he literally just turns on the camera and talks. And I explained to that person. I said, Strongman is like very similar to a Twitch streamer because Strongman is able to put out very low effort videos. He can literally just turn on the camera and talk. He doesn't even have to pull up what he's talking about. He can just turn on the camera and talk and he'll get views because he's very, very entertaining. Most people do not have that type of charisma entertainment. So, so it's a compliment. He has that. And so I was explaining that to that person that don't emulate Strongman if you're trying to grow your channel, unless you're as entertaining as him, which most of us aren't. I'm not as entertaining as Strongman. And so I was explaining that to them because they were like, you know, I'm just looking at Strongman. I'm like, man, this guy's just turning on the camera and talking and he's just killing it. And, and, and he's like, how was he doing that with bad thumbnails? And I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know it's crazy. But I'm like, it's it's because he's an, an he's an anomaly. He's just like these Twitch streamers. He's just like Hasanabi and Aiden Ross, these people who literally just turn on a camera and talk and they get millions of views. It's crazy. I know it's crazy. But some people on this earth are just that entertaining that they could get views without all the editing. And I, to be honest with you guys, I think Strongman can continue to grow his channel without fancy editing or without the thumbnails being like really good because he's just that entertaining. He could do it. But I think it's a bad model for the average YouTuber to follow because most people aren't that entertaining. So that's my story with Strongman. Um, yeah, shout out to him. But just giving you guys that story because, you know, I had somebody reach out like, you know, oh, what about Strongman? It's like, no, that's an anomaly. Like, unless you're as entertaining as that, don't do that. You need to edit your videos because the rest of us are not that entertaining. We have to edit and we have to do cool stuff to keep people engaged. We don't know how to go Ryu and all that stuff. We don't know how to do that. Only he can do crap like that. <laughs> all right. Lincoln says he don't edit his videos. Yep, he doesn't. He still gets crazy. He gets more views than me. He gets more views than me with no editing. It's amazing. He's, he's, he's killing it. He's killing it. We need straw man sound bites on the echo streams. You guys want that? Uh, let's see. Spencer looks like people are speaking about Spencer. Let me know what you need on her. I got a lot. Really? Oh, can you email me? Oh my God. I hope you're still here. I'm always late in the comments. Oh my God. Please email me. You can even, you can even come up here and talk if you want. Hey, hey, Woodrow, please email me. I've been looking for uh people who've been in our group. I want to, I want to speak to them. I'm telling you, I'm really good at CoffeeZilla here. I'm telling you guys. it's The the video that I plan to make, the video that I plan to make on Kelly OG is going to take me like six to eight months to make. Like, I'm really taking my time. Honestly, the funny part is I already have some footage. Like, I've already started recording. Like, I already have some footage. I already have some research done on her. Like, I've already started. But I'm just really taking my time. And I want to talk to people that are in it. Yes, Woodrow, please email me. Please, please. And we could talk about like we could talk about like what different information we have. Matthew says Woodrow is dog walker. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't think Woodrow's dog walker, but you never know. Yeah, email me right now, Woodrow, please. And if you know anybody else, if you know anybody else that is uh that has been involved with uh Kelly OG, please let me know. I I, I can't wait to get her. I'm gonna get her. Thoughts on the TikTok ban. Sorry if I missed this. It was discussed earlier. Honestly, Linda, I don't really have an opinion on it. I definitely think that there's a valid concern to like national security with the app, but it's hard for me to have an opinion because I just don't get on TikTok. I'm old. I'm 28. Like TikTok is like when I was younger, when I was in high school, Vine was the thing. So I'm used to Vine. TikTok, yeah. Yeah. I'm old. I don't really have an opinion on it. Uh, if you want my opinion on whether it'll get banned or not, I absolutely think that TikTok will eventually get banned. Are you butthurt about Strongman making a video of you? No, no, no. He didn't even make a bad video of me. 
Does a strong man have two wives? No, he doesn't. He had an ex-wife that he divorced, and now he has a new wife. That's actually normal. A lot of people have several marriages in their lifetime. What, what strong man is doing is actually really normal. Most people that I know that are at least like older uh, have had like their first wife when they were in their 20s, and then it didn't work out, and then they get a new wife. Happens all the time. If strong man hires me, I can make his content 10 times better. You know what's funny, though? I think the amateur content he makes is actually what makes him special because it's different. I actually I actually think he should honestly keep doing what he's doing. The only critique I would have of him is just, just get better thumbnails. But honestly, I think his content is fine. I, I, I really do. I think he's entertaining enough where it really doesn't matter. That's really what I think. He's like a Twitch streamer. Look at these Twitch streamers. Like, like, the, like, you know, actually, you know what I would say? Strong man should probably, like, get a better camera, which I should, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm filming on a freaking iPhone. But strong man really reminds me of a Twitch streamer, somebody who literally is just entertaining enough where he could just turn on a camera. And these Twitch streamers have really nice quality cameras. So that's probably the only thing he would need to do is just get a better camera. You need personality for YouTube. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Even though there are some YouTubers that have no personality that have really big channels. So I don't know. I don't know. Linda says you need charisma for YouTube. You either have that or you don't. Echoes has a 100. I appreciate that, Linda. Yeah, I definitely think you have to have a little bit of entertainment to you to, to do well on YouTube. I do believe that. Because YouTube at the end of the day really is entertainment. Now, there's ways to get around it because, you know, I like Spencer. Shout out to Spencer. This is no shade, okay? But Spencer's not entertaining, okay? I'm, that, I'm sorry. That's the only example I could think of. Spencer has to have the, the edited, well-edited stuff. Like, I can't imagine Spencer talking and I liking it. But maybe I could be wrong. Maybe. I don't know. But then I'll give you guys another example. Coffeezilla is very charismatic and entertaining. Coffeezilla could just turn on a camera and talk. And I would watch it and listen to it the whole way through because he's entertaining. So, yeah, it just depends. Some people are born with it. Some people are born with that gift of having charisma and being entertaining, and some people aren't. <clears throat> it's the same with Mac Attack. He's thoroughly entertaining. He just sits doing commentary. You guys are always putting me on to new channels I've never heard of. I'm about to check that out. Who is Mac Attack? Mac Attack. Oh, he's, he gets decent views. Mac Attack. Will you take a moment to... Get going and be around a community of people. Oh, yeah. This guy is hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like this guy. Hey, shout out to you, Steamship, for putting me onto this Mac Attack guy. Oh, I, I can already tell you. I've only watched him for five seconds and I already like him. Look, so much He's making this really funny right? face. So much is just it's in okay, I'm going to subscribe to it. I like Mac Attack. This guy is funny. I don't even know what many videos he makes. Let me see if he makes stuff that I care about. Yeah, Mac Attack seems like a funny guy. I like him. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Some people just have it. Some people don't. Uh-oh, we got a super chat. Shout out to the super chat. Thank you, Christoph, for the $9, $10 super chat. Really appreciate it. I didn't get that email yet. Where you at? What was that guy's name again? I forgot the guy's name, but the guy who was going to Woodrow, wasn't that his name? The guy who was going to tell me about Kelly OG, where you at? Where you at? <clears throat> I want to see an email. Help me out. Help me as I do my digging in the Kelly OG. All right, I'm behind the comments. So I'm going to have to skip, guys, because I'm just way behind. I like it when you guys ask questions like this. Oh, here he is, Woodrow. Yeah, Woodrow, send me that email. Or if you want to come on the channel and talk, we can do that too. But just send me an email. Linda says, what is, oh, I'm sorry. I got to answer this super chat. My bad, Linda. Hold on. I got to answer this. I got to answer this super chat. Email sent. Do you have the address? You said email sent. <laughs> your, your email immediately went to my spam folder. That's a bad sign. That's not good. I would pull up my email on the screen, guys, but uh, there's uh, confidential emails in there that I can't share, so I can't do that. 
Yeah, I got your email, Woodrow, but like something about your email is a little off. First of all, I went to my spam folder. That's already bad. You got to give me more, uh, Woodrow. All you said was, let me know what you need on her. Just send me everything. Like, I want to see what you got. You said, I'm assuming you have her address. Yes, I do have her address, but you're free to send it to me just in case. The only reason, the only reason why I looked at her address, somebody says Scott got you. Yeah, it probably is, Scott. It probably is. It probably is. Respond with a number and I'll call you. Yeah, that's probably Scott. You guys are right. Probably. Good old Scott. Always being a weirdo. All right, let's read more comments. Oh, I got to read the super chat. Super chat goes first. Scott, you're weird for pretending to be another weirdo. I said, oh, you're saying you said you don't have much hope for Chicago. Do you plan on moving out? Why don't you have hope? What area of town were you raised in? I find it gross that these guys are just curtailing the minorities. Yeah, the reason why I don't have much hope for Chicago is because I thought Lori Lightfoot was going to be the change we needed because she was like outside of like political machine and she was horrible. I just don't think Chicago can be fixed. I think it's just been messed up so bad because there's there's other outside factors that contribute to the problem, Christoph. Besides the mayor, I don't think the mayor could just come in and just fix everything. I don't think it works that way. I, I don't think Chicago's fixable. I really don't. I just don't. That's really my honest opinion. And yeah, I really want to move out of Chicago. I've been wanting to move out of Chicago for years. Actually, I did move out of Chicago. I moved to Michigan. I lived in Michigan in 2018. Uh, but yeah, the only reason why I don't move out of Chicago is because my girlfriend is adamant about staying here because our whole family lives here. So blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What area of town were you raised in? I was everywhere, man. Uh, lived in South Shore neighborhood as a kid. So the South Side of Chicago, a little bit on the West Side. Then I moved to the suburbs. Just been everywhere. <clears throat> everywhere. But South and West, I'd say. I definitely never lived up North or nothing like that. All right, that's the answer to your question. I want to read Linda's comment. What is a typical day for you, Echoes? Work, YouTubing, life, gym, et cetera. That's a great question. Okay, here's here's my here's my typical day in the life. So the good thing about me is with my job, believe it or not, I can choose my hours as long as I'm working eight hours. So it really depends on my YouTube schedule. So for the most part, I try to get to work at 7 a.m. Obviously, I work from home. My desk is right over here. And what I do is I wake up in the morning, you know, brush your teeth, all that stuff, uh, make breakfast. Maybe it'll be like oatmeal, banana, something like that. I'll do something like that. Then after that, uh, it depends. Sometimes I make videos in the morning if there's like an urgent video I want to put out. And sometimes I just go to work. So it depends. If I have a video to make, then I'll start work at like 8 o'clock, 8.30. If I don't have a YouTube video to make in the morning, then I'll just uh, I'll just uh, start work at 7 o'clock. Because like I said, as long as I work eight hours... My job doesn't care. So I do that. After that, uh, I work. I work my entire eight hours. I get my hour break. And then after work, I immediately go to the gym every single day. And typically what I do is I record my videos on my lunch break. Typically, the videos that come out at like four or five o'clock. I typically what I do is I work on my lunch break. And obviously, I don't work on YouTube while I'm at work. So I don't have time to edit. So I actually am not able to edit until I get off work. So normally... By the time I'm done with work, my video is already done recorded because I already recorded the video. I just have to edit it a little bit, you know, add some stuff to it, put the green screen behind the background, all that. So I do that. So what I do is every single day, believe it or not, I actually edit my videos when I'm at the gym. So what I do is I go to the gym directly after work every day, never fails. And I'm immediately either on the Stairmaster or I'm on the treadmill. While I'm on the treadmill working out, I always try to do at least an hour or two a day walking. Normally, I'm only able to do an hour. It's very rare that I'm able to do two, but I normally try to do an hour. And then after that, I'll either do weights or I'll do push ups, something like that, you know, maybe for like 30 minutes. But for the most part, I'm really trying to work on like cardio, just make sure I'm getting because I'm sitting down so much throughout the day. I always want to make sure I'm getting my physical activity. 
So, yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, by the way, I don't always walk. Sometimes I'm playing basketball. I absolutely love playing basketball my, with my friends. So my friends are available. I'll be playing basketball for several hours. I do that a lot. But, yeah, mostly uh, if my friends aren't available to play basketball, then I'm on the treadmill editing a video. Once the video is edited, I'll either get off the treadmill and go play basketball or I'll just stay on the treadmill, whatever I do, go lift weights, whatever. So that's what I do. And then after the gym, I come home and uh, it depends. Sometimes I'm working on another video. Sometimes I'm spending time with my girlfriend. Maybe I'm going to the mall shopping. Maybe I'm playing chess. It just really depends. So that's my life on the weekdays. That's literally what I'm doing. That That's literally it. That's, 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 yeah, there you go. I feel like you don't sleep. I think I get like six, seven hours. You're probably right. You're, actually, you're right. You're right. I do sleep. I'd say I go to bed at midnight every night. That That's normally when I go to sleep is midnight, which is a good night's sleep for me. If I go to bed at midnight and I wake up at like 6, 630, I get a good six hours. That's a good night's sleep for me. I can easily function on six hours. So there you go. That's my day in the life, Linda. Thanks for asking. Woodrow says, who wants to put money on it? This person says, I'll call you when you are done with live. Just give me a number. You got to send me stuff first, uh, Mr. Woodrow. He say, he's saying he'll call me uh, when I'm done. Give me a number. I'm not going to give you a number. You got you to gotta just email me the stuff. Once I see what you have, I can verify you're real. It's sad that we even have to go through this. But yeah, Woodrow, just, just, you don't have to, I'm not going to get on the phone with you until I have some proof that you might be legit. I'm not going to waste my time with, you know, you being somebody weird. Just, if you have proof on Kelly OG, just send me what you got and we'll go from there. Even now, don't get my videos. Even now that most of my videos get 20K views, I'm still like, man, I wish it did better. Yeah, that's how YouTube is, man, Orlando. YouTube is a never-ending cycle of just you want to do better, go higher. That's how it goes. Let's see. He lost like 300K. Echoes, buy a camera body only, then get a lens, a good one. I'm telling you, Lincoln, I'm literally going to message you and just pay you for, like, advice. Like, we're literally just going to have, like, a phone call. You're just going to tell me how it goes because I don't know how this crap works. What kind of camera? Does it matter? You said get a camera body. What kind of camera? Strong man and his ex-wife were in, in the Army, and she took half. Good old USA. If that really happened, that actually sucks. Did she really take half? That sucks. If you have dirt, send to Echoes. He'll hunt any fact down. Yeah, that's true. Uh, people send me stuff a lot, and when they do, I always verify it. And it's funny because I've gotten a few emails that tried to trick me, which could be Scott. Who knows? But it never, ever works because I always verify before I uh, do it. I always verify. I always do my research. Book recommendations. It depends. Books on what? Investing? Uh, you know, what kind of books? It depends. Move to Arkansas. You know what's funny? I actually have cousins and my uncle lives in Arkansas. I've been to Arkansas a bunch. My uh, cousins that I used to visit a lot when I was younger, they live in Little Rock, Arkansas. So I've been to Arkansas a bunch of times. Arkansas wouldn't be terrible. I mean, it's better than Chicago. Everything's better than Chicago. Okay. I just want to put that out. Everything is better than Chicago. Chicago sucks, but I'm stuck. Nice dude. I live in Miami beach for the winter. So I'll be back in May. Where would you want to live? Uh, I would either want to live in Texas or Georgia. Those are the two States that I would much rather live in. I like them. I've, I've never been to Georgia. I've never been to Atlanta. I've never been to Georgia, but I've been to Texas a bunch of times. But either one will be good. <clears throat> I love Chicago after COVID. Being stuck in a small condo with nothing open sucks so much. I promise I would never spend another winter there. Yeah, good for you, man. I wish I could do it. I don't like Chicago either, actually. I can't wait to move. 
Linda says, damn, you don't stop moving. Gil says you can't skip weights, bro. Sometimes I do. I think that's my problem. I need to, I definitely lift, need to lift weights more for sure. Sometimes I skip weights because I would just much rather play basketball than lift weights. So if my friends are like, you know, if we're all hooping and there's other people playing ball and we're playing and we're, we're, we're destroying them, you know, when you're playing basketball, you could go all night. You could play for hours. So by the time you're done, you're tired. You, you don't got time to lift weights. That's normally what happens. I end up playing basketball for so long, I don't have time to lift weights. Basketball is one of the most, my favorite things to do. It's so fun. That's literally like, basketball and chess are like my favorite activities. I got to hop off live. Have a good night. Pitchfork gang, good night. See you later, man. Appreciate you. Get some adjustable weights and a cycling bike to work out at home. Yeah, you're right. I probably should. Working out at home would be much easier for me. I also like basketball. It's the only sport I'll play for a long time. Yeah, basketball is so fun. Yep, I love it. You're a machine. I need 10 hours. Really? I'm sure as I get older, it'll probably change for me. But yeah, as of right now, I uh, I typically get six hours of sleep a day and it works. It works perfectly. I go to bed at midnight. Lincoln says, don't give him the phone number. Oh, trust me. I know. I know it's sketchy. I already know. I know it's sketchy. You know how I know it's sketchy, Lincoln? Because I have a lot of people that leak information to me. Nobody's ever asked for my phone number. So, like, I know. Trust me, I know. I already know. I'm not going to fall for it. I mean, he might be legit. I don't know. But if he is, he'll have to do it through email. Oh, look at that. He just sent me he just sent me some legit information. He might be real. All right, here's what we're going to do. Somebody said that's Scott Schaefer trolling you. You know what? It actually might be her. It might actually might be Well, actually the address you put down, that's I don't think that's the address. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, never mind. Oh, you look at you. Oh, look at you. You've really done your research. The fact that you've done this well of research, you actually found something that I've been looking for. <laughs> Why don't you come on camera? How about that? Let's do that. Come on camera, bro. That's how we're going to settle this. That's how we'll settle if you're Scott or not. Just come on camera. So far, you're doing pretty good. You've already sent me something very juicy, so I appreciate that. Come on camera. What podcast do you listen to? Uh, I don't know. I like Joe Budden's podcast. I listen to Joe Budden because I like hip-hop. And I also like all the drama that happens in like the black community and the hip-hop world, so I listen to Joe Budden. Joe Rogan. I like Joe Rogan's podcast. Um, I like Concrete. Concrete has a really good podcast. They talk about like aliens and like cartels and just really interesting stuff. So the Concrete podcast, I like a lot too. Uh, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Hey, Woodrow, come on camera. Come in here. Come on in here. Financial book recommendations. Oh, this person said I'm legit. I want to keep private. Okay. Well, then give me your phone number and I'll call you. That's how we're going to do that. Since you say you want to be private, fine, fine. Give me your number and I'll call you. That's how we're going to do that. What, hey, guys, Woodrow might actually be legit. He actually sent me some interesting information. He might be legit. He might be legit. Let me look at something real quick. 
of course, whatever he sends me, I'm going to do thorough research on. Don't get me wrong. Send me your number. I'll call you. And if you're Scott, I don't know what to say. Oh, best finance books. Yeah, let me let me find that for you. I have a list. I'll I'll read it to you. Let me see if I could uh, find it. Hold on. Books, books, books. Let's see. Uh oh, I don't know where my books list went. I had a list of books, but I can't find it right now. Oh, I think I found it. Is this it? All right, here goes some books, Caleb. Uh, you know what? The book by that Ashwaf guy is really good. I forgot his name. Ashwaf something. Here, I'll, I'll show you. Hold on. We're going to share this screen. I'll show you. There's this guy named Ashwaf. He makes really good. He, he, uh, he like trained all the bankers on like how to value stocks. What's his name? Ashwath. I can't remember the guy's name. Oh, this is him right there. That's him. Damo. This is him. So, yeah, this one. So, honestly, any book by him would be good. So, like, you could get this book right here. Let me make sure my screen is shared. Hold on. I think it is. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Okay, it is. So yeah, this book right here is good. That book is good. This book is good. So yeah, this book right here is good. Uh, any of these books are good. You you said the super chat, Christoph? Did I miss it? I didn't see a super chat. My bad. I did not see a super chat from you. I saw the first one. Maybe you said in the first one. My bad. My bad. Uh, public chess spots. There's a few. I can't remember off the top of my head. There's a. Uh, I I don't remember. I gotta ask my dad. My dad knows what they are. I don't remember. I haven't played public chess in Chicago in a while. I haven't played in a while. I used to back when I was younger, but I know I know where I live. There's a public chess place in this uh, Overwise. Uh, I don't know if every Overwise does it. Maybe every Overwise has a public chest. I don't know. But I know the one in the neighborhood I grew up in, uh, there's a public chest there that I used to play people in. But yeah, I don't know. I have to ask my dad. Okay. Let's get back to it. Fresh and fit got boring and repetitive. Concrete used to be with Ben Mala. Is that true? I didn't know that. Woodrow is Kelly OG's father. You guys are hilarious. All of my numbers, blah, blah, blah. We will need to find a way. I'd rather just not be mentioned. Oh, come on, dude. Just come on. You don't have to come on camera. Just talk. I mean, fine, fine. If you don't want to do it that way, fine. Just send me something then. Like, I don't know. All right, guys. He wants to call me. What do you guys suggest that I do? You got you guys, some of you guys are really smart and nerdy. All right, guys. I need you guys to use your spooky alien nerdy powers. This guy says he has valuable information on Kelly OG. He wants to call me, but I don't want to give out my personal number because, like I said, I just don't know. Unfortunately, you got weirdos like Scott doing weird stuff. So what should I do? Can't you set up like a number through Google or something? Isn't there a way to do that? Could I just do that and have him call that number and see what happens? Should I just do that? What do you guys think I should do? Because this guy says he has valuable information. Call on IG. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, call me on Instagram. There you go. Good idea. Great idea, Lincoln. 
call him live on stream. He doesn't he doesn't want me to like reveal his like anything because I don't know why, but hold on. I just said call me on Instagram. There you go. Great idea, guys. My Insta is Echoes from Above. You can't miss it. There you go. Call me on Insta. Here, let me turn my phone off. Do not disturb. So I can hear it. Since so you say you got valuable information, let's find out. There you go, Woodrow. There's your chance. Call me on Instagram. All right. Tell him to do voice chat on live stream. He doesn't want to do voice chat. He doesn't want to like come on at all. He wants to be completely private. Like he doesn't even want anybody to know like who he is. That's what I was thinking too, but it seems like he doesn't want to do it. Yeah, let's see if he could do that. I would much rather him do that. Yeah, just come on camera. He said 45 year olds don't have. All right, bro. <laughs> You're sounding even more sketchy. Just come on, just come on live and don't show your face. Yeah, literally. Woodrow, if you're still here, bro, just come on live and don't show your face. Like. I have to leave, unfortunately, but thanks for doing this live, Echoes. You're welcome, Linda. Thanks for being here. No, there was two, bro. My bad. My bad. My bad, Christoph. My apologies. I'm sorry. My bad. If you have any other questions, Christoph, just let me know. Market won't crash, you moron. See, this is the good thing about me only investing in the s and I don't give a flying crap about what the market is going to do tomorrow, the next day. Thanks, dude. Trying to find some over-the-board games. We have some in my office, but no one plays. Oh, yeah, that sucks. No one plays. Why doesn't anybody at your at your office interact? Heckles, look it up. All Ben's first videos were done by Concrete. They had a fight and went separate ways. Really? I didn't know. I didn't know Ben Mala. Right, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't remember Ben Mala being on concrete. That sounds crazy. Ben Mala on concrete? That doesn't even make sense. Oh, you're right. You're right. You know your stuff. He was. Ben Mala was on concrete. Wow, look at that. Yeah, okay. I guess you're right. Just keep your cam off. Yeah, come on, Woodrow. Just come on and keep your cam off. Okay, so real talk, is Kid Freshy Scott or not? We have no idea. He may or may not be. We don't know. Use Telegram or something. Yeah, I know. If you have valuable information on Kelly OG, like, I don't know. We got to figure it out. The chat's giving you decent options, uh, uh, Woodrow. You don't have to show your face. Just, I can even private the live stream if you want. Like if you don't, if you're scared that like her people might see the live stream, I highly doubt any of her people are watching right now. But if you're worried that they might see it later on, I could just private the stream after I'm done recording, if that's what you want. You don't have to show your face, just come on. Audio only. There you go. Okay. 
All right, here you go, Woodrow. There's your last chance. Just come on. Give him a fake number. Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. What's your take on the Doquan arrest? I think it's great. I think it's great for crypto that they caught that criminal. That's all I can really say. I think it's very interesting. It's interesting that they they're filing charges. Like they they're ready. Like they're going to get him. They've already filed charges and everything. Yeah, I think it's crazy. It's crazy how many criminals are in crypto. It's it's insane. There's so many. Echoes, what is your bank? Like, who do I bank with? I got several banks. Chase, Bank of America, Huntington. I got several banks. <clears throat> Let's see. Love that office. Thank you. Ben funded concrete. Oh, look at that. You know the history. I'm Kid Freshy. Are you really Kid Freshy? That would be really funny. LW, are you really Kid Freshy? I'm out soon, my dude. Have a good night. Let's grab a beer and some chess. Sure. I mean, you guys are welcome to play me in chess whenever, just so you guys know. My... My chess handle thing is Echoes from Above. If just go on chess.com, add me as a friend, Echoes from Above. We can play whenever. Use Google Voice. He said, I'll send you a number to call later. Yeah, I don't really like that. I don't really like that, uh, Woodrow. Something about that don't sound right. I get a lot of people that send me a lot of information. And when I ask them something to verify, they immediately send it to me. So I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, God. What are you doing here? Will you leave me alone, dude? Oh, God. Do you guys remember this guy? You guys remember this guy? He's been on my channel before. This freaking guy. Oh, my God. You know what? I'm going to bring him on. Why not? You want to come on, Gabe? I think the chat would like it if you came on. Let's spice it up. Come on the live, Gabe. Make it entertaining. Here you go, Gabe. There's your chance. There's your chance, bro. Come on the live, Gabe. People know who you are anyway. Look at that. Ryu Gabe is here. Look at that. The people love him. Why do you guys like Gabe so much? You know damn well I'm trolling. Honestly, man, I don't know who, I don't know who, uh, I don't know who, uh, what's the name is. I don't know who Kid Freshy is. <clears throat> I really want Woodrow to come on, but Woodrow doesn't want to come on. So I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. I don't know, Woodrow. I don't know. Can you please do a video on James Pelton? Who the heck is that? I don't know who that is. I don't know who James Pelton is. I mean, I can look into him, but I don't know who that is. Let him come on. We have questions for him. He can come on if he wants. Yes, please. Don't try to fight Gil again. I mean, honestly, I have nothing, like, bad to say regarding Gabe. Like, I just don't care. Like, I'm on to bigger and better things. Gabe is like, you know, what happened in the past happened in the past. I just really don't care. Sure, give me five minutes driving. There you go. He'll he'll be on soon, guys. There you go. The people want Gil. I mean, if Gil wants to come on, he could come on too. He's a freaking troll too. Drama sells. Yeah, it definitely does.
Do a vid on Luke Belmar. You guys can give me names of people I've never heard of. Who the heck is Luke Belmar? Luke Belmar. Holy cow, he has amazing thumbnails. Oh, I've seen this guy before. Where have I seen this guy? Oh, I've definitely seen this guy before. Does he have like a podcast or something? I've definitely seen this guy before. I don't know where I've seen this guy before from, but I know I've seen this Luke Belmar guy before. I didn't know that was his name. Oh, he was on Sebastian Giorgio's channel. That's where I've seen him. I think. Yeah. Well, whatever. All right. Gil versus Mark part two. Who the heck is Mark? Please do not get Cole on. Why do you hate, why do you guys hate Cole so much? <clears throat> get Cole on the F. Yeah, I don't know why people hate Cole. Okay, Timothy, why don't you like Cole? I really want to know. I really want to know why you don't like Cole. He's friends with Sebastian Andrew Tate. Yeah, that's where I know him. He's in that little like red pill, not even red pill. He's in that like Andrew Tate wannabe crew. I emailed you about James Pelton in details. Okay. I didn't get your email yet, but all right. Maybe it'll send eventually. Gil can talk about anything on his channel, bro. And <laughs> Dang, why is everybody... Why is everybody going in on uh why is everybody going in on Cole? Cole is lazy, that's why, and he makes excuses for being a loser. I don't think Cole's a loser. That's not very nice. Cole is always trying too much, man. Not really genuine feeling, in my opinion. Why do you guys feel that way? That's not very nice. I hope Cole isn't in here watching silently because he he wouldn't be very happy that you guys are talking crap about him. That's it's very mean. You guys are mean. Cole is a virgin. I don't think Cole's a virgin. Cole hates people who are successful and hates being a loser, but continues. But Gil, you say the same thing about me. You say that I hate people who are successful, which is so, which is like ridiculous. But you say the same thing about me. You say, you say that I'm a hater of people that are successful, which is so dumb. So I don't know if I can take you serious saying that Cole hates people that are more successful than him. Because people say the same. Well, you say the same thing about me. Oh, I Echoes is a hater. He hates people that are more successful than him. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. <clears throat> Cole has a job. Yeah, Cole is a Cole works at a bank. He's not an investment banker. What's it called? What's it called, guys? Not a bank teller. He's one of the people where... Wait, has he said this publicly? Let me shut up. Let me show. I don't want to dox him. All right, let's see. Wow, you guys really don't like Cole. Jeez. Man, I do not know the guy, of course. Pretty sure he is a good guy. Just trying too much, which makes him kind of difficult to see through. Interesting. Interesting. Cole be simping. I think Cole's a good guy, but he tries to already makes a lot of excuses. You guys are hilarious. All right, guys, you guys wanted him, so here he is. I bring him in. I have brought him. He's here. 
Hold on, I got two things going on at the same time. It's all good. Take your time. I'll just we're just talking about Cole. There we go. I think. Nope. The fuck is it coming? Yeah, Lincoln's got it right. Cole is a good guy. I don't know. I don't know where all the all right, I don't know where it. all the Cole hate is coming from. All right, we're good now. All right, cool. I, I um I just want to show one thing because when I wore my one of my lucky hats, I think someone said that I have no money because I have a shitty hat. I, this is a nice hat. I just got it today. Isn't that dope? So, I don't what's know. the logo? Uh, it's the old Oakland A's. Oh, okay. No, that actually is a nice hat. Actually, it does look yeah. nice. It's dope. It is All nice. right. Yeah. So, what's up? What do you want to talk about? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> Can you Sorry unblock? You I literally had to log into my civilian account. I don't know what it's called. Not civilian account. Uh, my non uh, YouTuber account because apparently you uh, blocked or shadow banned the other one, GS Strategies. So unshadow ban that one yeah that, that makes me very happy that you had to do all that just to comment on here it makes me very right happy. you know i i i swore off of you because of the complete vitriol i had for you and then um and then you know time heals everything and then you had that that you had that good uh video really good video with um that guy who's friends with somebody in vegas spencer yeah, cornelia yeah yeah him spencer and there was a part, there was a part where you were asking him stuff. And if you look at his face, um, the it just like I don't know if he's guilty or whatever, but when you asked him something, his face completely turned like of, of shame and 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 admittance of guilt. And um anyway, it was a good episode for whatever it was worth. And I made a comment and uh and uh you didn't reply. So that was my first <laughs> that was my first <laughs> inkling uh that uh that uh that you blocked me but it's all good you know good on you for trying to get away from drama and for whatever it's worth i'm not trying to create drama yeah yeah you're anyway. good you're yeah. good yeah the channel the channel's been revamped a little bit i mean we still do drama we're just not as messy as before i try to be have at least some journalistic integrity in what i do now at least some i try well, congrats we'll see how it goes. On, congrats. I, I, I think that's better for you because, you know, just completely, for lack of a better way of saying it, hating on people is, that's weird. That's a weird way to get clout, man. You're, you're smarter than that. I know you're yeah, not stupid. That I do know. Yeah. So. I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's, I don't think it's hating on people. You know what I really think? I think the way that I delivered it is, is probably what makes it come off that way. But I, I truly don't believe that I, I've ever hated on any of them. I, I truly believe that a lot of these people are just bad people. But again, I don't know how long you've been in the finance community. Like, I don't know if you've been watching these dudes and you know or you don't, but I was watching these guys back in 2020 before I even started YouTube. That's why I have such a high conviction on them being scammers because I've been watching them for so long. Like, I used to be fans of a lot of these guys before I, like, realized that they were clowns. Like, that's the real story. Listen, man, I, I, I'm like torn, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to name any YouTubers because then I'm just going to be doing what I gave you crap about, right? But sure, I, 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 I see YouTubers completely just BS their way uh, around things. <clears throat> And, 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 and I like scratch my head. It's like, why, how does this guy or girl have a channel? And then I look at the comments. Thank you for, I will say one name. There's one name I am going to say and look him up. He's, he's in my opinion, he, you will probably have never thought of him, but he is the biggest fucking, excuse my cursing. He, he is, he's a joke. His name, his name is, um, rich TV live, rich oh TV live, like literally, uh, he was big back, he, or at least he started to get big back when like cannabis stocks first started up, right? Uh, he is, um, <laughs> if, if you, uh, if you look up, if you want to laugh, it's only if you want to laugh, right? You're definitely going to mm -hmm. laugh at me. I was, I was stationed in Belize at the time. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, he, he's such a scammer. And when I say hate, 
I mean, I know I said I've hated you, but I don't <clears throat> hate you. Like, if you were about to get hit by a car, I'd push you out the way, right? Him, I wouldn't. I hate, I hate, he's a scammer, he's a liar, he's, he's the worst kind of people. So if you really, if you guys in the chat really want to have a laugh in YouTube, type in um, uh, Rich TV Live um, Exposed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see my first ever YouTube video from years ago. Uh, but anyway, uh, so back to what we were saying. So half of me, I understand you because I also really dislike disingenuous pieces of poop. Um, but, but, but then the other half of me, the adult part of me is, is like, I feel could be way off. I feel that just like, you don't, the, especially with that, you, you, you listen, you are. It's a pro and a con at the same time. It's like a double-edged sword for you because you have uh, charisma, but you also have that smile, which is a charismatic smile that is also a ha-ha F you smile, right? Um, and it, it's, it's just – long story short, man, uh, I, I, I felt like you, you, you just – you go on – you don't do it like investigative. You don't give them the benefit of the doubt first. You literally come to your own conclusions and pass it on as fact. You're like judge, jury, and executioner. Anyway, obviously, I wouldn't have had such a big problem of it to be completely transparent if you didn't come at me because mm -hmm. that's what really pissed me off. And that's what, yeah, but anyway, it is what it is. I get it. I yeah. get it. Sorry. When when you start giving short answers like that, I knew you just want me to shut up. Okay, so what's up? Ask me. No, something. you're good. No, you're no, okay. you're good. I'm I'm not giving you short answers just to like be rude. Like I'm I'm genuinely listening to you. My my one comment I was gonna make was um I think a lot of what you said is actually right. I think it's better, it takes a lot of work to do and it burns me out sometimes, but it's better to do real research and dig stuff up before making videos uh accusing people. So I, I do agree with that, but like I said, I, I think uh, I think the reason why I play judge and jury or however you said it is because I literally I literally watch these people. So you're right. I should present everything that I have. I think that's the mistake that I made. But, man, I'm telling you, man, I literally watch these people like I can literally break down to you their histories because I watched them like Larry Jones, Jeremy, me, Kevin. Like I literally watched these guys for the last like two, three years. So I saw well, it all. So I saw it all. So some of the things you said about – let's use Jeremy for an example. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't remember, but I do remember making this point in my head. It was like complete conjecture. It's like you, you are you – are, you, you're coming to your own conclusion, right? And, 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 and then now so, – so look. So let, let's just say you're right about everyone that you just said, and they are complete scammers or, or grifters, as you put it, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't change the fact, right, that you called me a grifter. You, you mm -hmm. called me a grifter, mm -hmm. right? A grifter is a scammer. It's a, it's a synonym of scammer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I have never scammed anyone, right? And, and you know, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole again. Okay, we're, we're past that. But, I mean, if you said just, you know, give me one example. Well, there's one. There's one, in my opinion. You, 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 you incorrectly were judge and execution army. But anyway, apparently they want to talk about the market. So if you want to talk to market, I would love to do that. No, you go ahead and talk about the market. I'm just chilling. This is your show, man. You got to ask me questions and I answer. That's how it works. Well, they asked you about the market. They want to hear your thoughts. I don't I don't ever talk about the market on my channel. Oh, you don't talk about the market anymore? You stop that? It's not your thing anymore? I never really did it. I made some videos about it, but it, it was really? never really my thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I done it before. No, you're right. I, I've made videos on it before, but I don't make very many. Okay. Well, that's like, that's, that's like good. That was that's never safe. Like the that's yeah, that safe. Was never really. Okay. Okay. I mean, I mean, there's 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 a lot about it that I understand, but I'm definitely like not a guru, and I've made that clear so many times. So like, I don't think I have the experience to like actually come on here and pretend to be Warren Buffett. So like, why do that? Just stick to what you're good at. It's the way I look I at it. I hear you, man. I so you know, I'm definitely not a, a Warren Buffett, or I'm definitely not uh a guru because because let's be honest the only people who are gurus are only you can only know after the fact right if they were right people are gonna 
there's going to be people that say there is a crash and then there isn't. And then whatever happens later, oh, I guess you were right. So now you're a guru, right? No, but mm -hmm. so I have no qualms in uh, talking about the market and what I think is going to happen. And I have no qualms putting out my trades out there. So one of the last things I did, this is how long we've been in beef. Actually, I literally just started. I remember like it was yesterday. I just started my puts on the spy. And then and then a week, a, a week or two had passed and I was down 30% and on, a, on, on, on the first batch of puts that I bought. And, um, and you, uh, you gave me shit for it. Well, not me directly. You said, Gabriel doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's down 30% already. Well, it's a trade and it takes time to happen. But so long story short, you'll be, you'll be happy to know that or unhappy or don't give an F uh, that I, 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 I dollar cost averaged into my June puts as time went on and I closed them out at almost a perfect time last week when the market uh, in this leg bottomed before it started going up where it is now. And um, at one point, Echoes, as hard as it is to believe, I was actually green. Um, but I didn't close them out in time, so I finished uh, about 10% down. So there's that. That trade didn't go great for me, but are you ready for this? Because because this part you're mm -hmm. not going to believe. I don't think you're going to believe me when I tell you this. Let's hear it. Are you ready? Yep, at one at one at one point I was down eighty five percent on those puts. Christ. Yeah, yeah, because at the so so look at the chart when the spy hit the very tippity tip mother of effing top, my my puts were down eighty five percent. It was it was, it, but at that point it doesn't make sense to close them because they expire in June. So lucky I didn't. Um, but anyway, go ahead uh, if you don't mind being the host. Um, if they're asking questions, just tell me what. They ask, and then I'll answer it. Echoes. Sure. There's a question from Lincoln for you. He says, uh, which finance YouTubers have you stopped watching and why? I mean, I think it's easier to tell you who I do watch. <laughs> okay, it's easier who to tell you, you who, I, who I do watch. Um, so what's his name? He's an Asian guy. Today, he had an amazing video, like spot on, like everything I think he just verbalized it. Um, I'll tell you his name in a second. Um, sorry, I'm taking so long. No, you're good. His name is there. He is Clear Value Tax. Clear oh, that's value. my that's my friend. <laughs> that, that that guy's great. That guy that guy's great. I, I I love the way like every time CPI or PPI comes out, I love the way he breaks it down. And um, so wow. I've been call I've been amazing. calling I've been calling stagflation for a long time. And uh, I'm gonna answer his question, uh, but. That guy, Clear Value Tax, had a great village today where I think he lays it out perfectly. He says the Fed has two choices, create a depression, right? Create a depression or hyperinflation, right? Definitely hyperinflation is worse than a depression. That's what happened to Nicaragua, right? So um, what the Fed is going to – I think what the Fed is doing on purpose at this point, and I think it's imminent, uh, is they are just um, acquiescing to, to 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 stagflation personally. So um, I believe stagflation and, and what stagflation is, it's basically it's 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 high um, in high inflation during a recession. That's stagflation, right? It, it's 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 like bleeding. It's like painful for a long time. Okay, so I watch him. Um, that's cra uh, that's crazy, <laughs> but yeah, I literally when did I when did I meet him? Like maybe like two months ago, three months ago, something like that. He's a re he's a really good guy though. Yeah, fuck being a good guy. I really don't give a shit about how good someone is. Um, if they're a finance YouTuber, I uh, I only put value in their transparency. Like, are they a honest, genuine person? And that's just something that you can either tell or not tell. Yeah, that, and, that's what I mean by good guy. That's what I mean. 
Yeah, and 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 just just their their um. But you're not you're not a good guy if you're honest. Yeah, I mean, sorry, Echoes, you're you're not you're not a good guy. Yeah, I'm a dick and I'm honest, right? <laughs> what? I, I think uh, I think uh, I think if you're honest, transparent, and you have good intentions of what you do, I think you're a good person, at least in the financial spot. That's what I think. Okay, well, I mean, I agree, but anyway, I'll move on because I don't want to make it about me. So, um, I, I, he knows his shit. Like I, I am, man. I've been racking. I've been studying for my CFA, and that that it's just a lot of information, and and the way that he's able to break down like the PPI. I'm telling you, he, he just he just knows. His, I I just him. So him, he and he's the last one I watched. Who else do I watch? Um, there's this one guy named Tyler. I just started watching him, but he, that's more of a trader. Um, what's his, cheese and rice? I forget. Sorry, I'm taking so long to answer these damn questions. I suck at this crap. Um, <laughs> anyway, I don't remember his name, but it's Tyler, and um. You know, uh, I will watch um, – I can't believe I'm going to say this because I absolutely hate it. But I will watch CNBC, but just to see what kind of BS they're feeding us, really. I don't – like, I don't – anything that CNBC says, I don't I, – I, I think there's an agenda behind absolutely everything. So I I, I, I watch it. I, I can – like, I won't even glance at Kramer. I think that guy is the worst. Um, and if I come up with other ones, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, but you're, um, answering texts while we're here on your live stream. So it's okay. Now you're good. Uh, damn. Lincoln says, damn, damn he avoided my question because the finance community is small. So I just want to know he stopped watching and why. Okay. So, uh, who did I stop watching recently? Um, and I didn't avoid your question, Lincoln, and I do remember you. So don't freaking anyway. Um, who did I stop? Okay, I know, I know who I will never watch, and 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 some of the people you hate. Like I agree with a lot of things. So so that guy who used to be a flipping teacher, Stockmo. Um, yeah, Stockmo. <laughs> oh, I know who else I watch. I know who else I watch. So Johnny Bravo, I I love his content. I I love it. It, it, it. He he's like a weird dude, and and he's always selling stuff. But there's a lot of nuggets in in his content. And then one of his friends, what's his name? Um, this next guy I'm going to tell you was brought to me by actually one of my Patreon members. And, and, and it's like, yeah, he's, he's on point. What the flip is his name? Um, he always has uh, – I got to just scroll down. Oh, okay. Oh, Wealthion. Just started watching him not too long ago. Like that is grade A um, content. Wealthion, I do watch. But who I um, – Oh, wait, but we're talking about who I don't watch. You don't care who I do watch, who I don't watch. Okay, so Stockmo, I won't even look at those, that clown stuff. Um, any of the young people, like young people, and, and anyone, anyone who talks about crypto, I automatically, nope, screw you. Um, so Zip Trader, there's, here, someone, Ch Guitar Chapman said Zip Trader. I used to watch Zip Trader. Um, and he's really smart guy and he knows his stuff, but I don't like any of his content. I, his content, I don't like it at all. Um, but he, he's not a, he's not a fake or a furu or anything. I just don't like his content doesn't resonate with me. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, Lincoln view. What about Chris saying? I don't know who that is. He's an options guy too. <laughs> he has like half a, he has, he has like half a million uh, subscribers. I bet you if I saw his face, I would know who you're talking about, but of names, I don't. Gil wants to know, why do you 100% believe the stock market will crash? That's that's a great question, Gil. I knew that you would give actual good questions. So nothing is 100%, right? And whether you agree with it or not, the stock market is manipulated, right? And shorting is much infinitesimally harder than um, going long just because of the nature of it and because of the fees. Like there is no fees to going long something, but there is no way to short something without paying some kind of fees or or theta decay or whatever. Like you're getting screwed some kind of way, right? 
And with that said, the market is definitely manipulated to the upside for political reasons. I mean, I can go on and on. But why do I think? I'm not going to put no. Why do I think we're going to crash? Well, all of the indicators, the leading indicators, the lagging indicators um, are, are, are saying crash, like all, all of them. Um, so m months ago, oh, let me tell you who I – who I will, who I, who I watch Tom Nash. I watch Tom Nash a lot. And for some reason he is on your naughty list and he is not a grifter. Tom Nash knows his stuff, right? Yeah. So I do want to say that Tom Nash knows his stuff. He really does. I know my stuff, but there's some things that he knows that I had no clue about. Right. So, so he knows his stuff, but anyway, back to what I was saying. So, Months ago, I don't know if you've heard about it, but it like so the 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 banks, which like has never been done before, what they would do, um, because you, you look so interested. It's really hard to talk to you, man. It really, really is. You're like, I mean, I don't have to be here. You ask me, I, whatever. Uh, I'll look up so that I don't see you disrespectfully not being a good host. Um, Months ago, the, the banks did something that they never did before, which is they they lowered their requirement or completely took it away to 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 buy a car. And one of those requirements were if 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 you had a certain debt to income ratio and you and you had a loan, the car had to be traded in in order to be approved. So they they completely like like negated that the need for that rule um, because the rationale that that they gave or that that was said that I remember is that if you're going to default on something, it's going to be on the older car because you want the new car. So that's never, that was, that was, that was a lagging indicator months, months ago. Right. Um, we have, we have GDP. Have you seen what the projected GDP is as to, as to what um, like, like the market and the fed, have two completely different ideas about what GDP we're going to, and someone's wrong. Somebody's wrong, right? And then you have something called the Taylor Rule, which a lot of people don't follow, but I do. And the Taylor Rule basically says it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an algorithm that, that basically dictates if you have inflation of X, you need to raise rates to Y in order to get X down to 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 three percent or or two percent whatever they want to get it to right and 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 the lowest metric excuse me the lowest um the 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 lowest number that uh the Taylor rule says that we have to that the Fed has to have a terminal rate of is like six point five percent and the terminal rate is five point one percent if you look at the Fed what is the terminal rate five point one to five point two five percent. So we're basically one more one more hike of 25 basis points and we're there. That is not going to stop inflation. That's another reason why I know we're in route to stagflation, which, Gil, to finally answer your question, when you put everything together, um, a, a, a recession, a stagflationary recession has to happen um, because there's only two other things that can happen, a depression or hyperinflation. And 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 those are death to our economy, right? Stagflation is a is a slow, painful bleed, but will eventually be overcome. But unfortunately, the people who suffer the most are the low to in, uh, middle income uh, people. So, thanks, Gil, for the good question. All right, we got another one right here. You got some response. He said he avoids people who shills crypto. I despise crypto. Not only did Tom shill crypto, he took sponsorship money. Tom's a double. So, so look up the. <laughs> well, I did. You know, I disagree. Right? I disagree. So, there's there's a couple things. So first, like me as a stock guy who like completely despises crypto. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You might not believe me here, right? If 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 FTX came to me and said, Gabe, we like your channel. We'll give you $50,000 a month. And they said, but you have to talk about FTX, right? And you have to, like, basically promote us. I'd be like, I'm not a crypto guy. I actually hate crypto. I am vehemently against crypto. I promise you, I would have not taken the money. But Tom is 
doesn't really hate crypto. I mean, people like Robert Kiyosaki love Bitcoin. Crypto and Bitcoin, I should say, like Bitcoin. If there's if there's if there's any crypto that I would get behind, if I ever, which I don't, I can't, I never say never, but right now I will not touch any crypto. It would be Bitcoin. But other than that, Tom, I mean, listen, you you guys can't fault them as much as you do just because of um, your, your you know hindsight is twenty twenty. What happened? What what? Let let's be factual here. What happened? We we had. We, when I say we, FTX had um, s such huge investors like um, BlackRock, and 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 um, um, it's a it's a it's a type of Toyota. What's the name of that big old group? I can't remember the name. But anyway, these large okay. these large um, in, in, in investment funds, right? Um, billions upon billions at BlackRock is trillions of dollars um, behind it, right? Like how much due diligence do you have to do in a company before you say, yeah, sure. If people, I will promote crypto. If, 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 if you are into crypto, then go to these people, FTX, because these people, these people, and these people believe in them. So why not? Right. I mean, that is better than saying, hey, buy this because Mike Tyson uh, is the model for it. It's a shitty example. You get what I'm saying? Um, we're in the wild, wild west of crypto. Um, well, no, he's not a crypto shill. So, again, individual investor, tell me, tell everyone what the definition of shill is, because that's not what Tom did. So. Long story short, um, you know, does it suck what happened to Tom and, and, and everyone else and, and ev anyone who had any money in, in, in FTX? Absolutely, right? Um, you're in the wild, wild west. Like, I, I, I'm, you know, sorry, not sorry, but I, Tom, Tom is not so, – so, you know, just because I'm saying Tom is not a shill, I want to make it very clear. I am also saying that – me, Kevin, was not a shill for, for um, FTX because even though you guys don't like him, and, and um, I actually like Meet Kevin. I mean, some of the stuff I don't, but I think he's a smart guy, and, and I, um, I applaud intelligence, and, and I think he's a hustler and, and incredibly smart. But, um, but I don't think that he is a, a shill or a scammer. And at the end of the day, what did they do, right? Echoes, what did they do? What did they do? At the end of the day – what did they do in their videos? They said, hey, this video is sponsored by FTX. If you need to get your crypto or Bitcoin, use <clears throat> FTX. That's pretty much the extent. They didn't say crypto is the best. You guys should all buy crypto and you should do FTX to do it. Uh, or they didn't, they didn't say all these other places suck and they're scammers but not FTX. All they said is, this video is sponsored by. So right there, when you're sponsored by something, you already know you're being upfront. You're saying, I'm getting paid for saying this, right? So I would just, I mean, I still, no one, no video or anything has been able to, which is why they're going to lose in the, in, the, in, the, in the litigation. No video has been able to prove how these YouTubers scammed anyone, shilled anyone. Uh, like any kind of disingenuous like BS was made, right? Like nothing, nothing was done. All they said is like, hey, this video is sponsored by, and if you do want to do crypto, do it with this people. So what do you they think made, about, about that? Yeah, like, uh, well, I, I disagree. I think uh, I no, think a lot of these guys made videos on crypto. Me, Kevin, and Jeremy, and they all made videos on crypto. Okay, to did, be did Tom? Did Tom make videos on crypto? Tom, I don't know, but we're are we talking about just Tom? Or are we talking about everybody else? So again, I don't follow these other people. And if if they made video okay, so I will I will clarify something. I'm not right. I didn't know that they made videos on crypto, right? So if they made a video on crypto and in that same video said that you need to use FTX because they're the best or something like that, that's different. But the examples I gave was mainly for Tom because I watch all of his videos and Tom 
never made a video about crypto saying that you should buy crypto with FTX only. Like he never, he never did any of but that. But he did. He did a sponsored video saying this video is sponsored by FTX. Go to FTX.com slash Nash or whatever. That's the same thing. No, 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 it's not. It, it's, it's So you're, you're. A sponsorship you're, you're, with crypto is a video about crypto. No, no, but it's not a sponsorship with crypto. It's a sponsorship of FTX. If, if he did a video that's on. Crypto. P- if he did a video on PPI data that was sponsored by crypto, that's not a, that was sponsored by FTX. It's not a, that's not a video on crypto. To me, it is. To I mean, me, it I is cannot, because you're, you're, you're spot people. I have no doubt that these guys with these big followings, people clicked on that link. They, okay, they influence people to click on their links and they signed up to FTX because of them. Okay. That's why they're being sued. I can't um, argue with your perception, but um, Matthew wants to see my puppy. I just got a new one. So I have two dogs now. Zelda. All right. I have the cutest dogs, man. It's Zelda and Link. If you're an old All person right. like me, and oh yeah, like I know Zelda, Zelda and Link. All right. I'm old enough. All right. uh, look at that. Oh, look, look at, at that. that. That's a Westie. <laughs> That's Link. That's Link. And then this is Zelda. Come here, Zelda. Uh, uh, this is this is Zelda. This is the content you guys like. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I no, love you're my good. Dogs. Everybody okay. likes dogs. Okay, so um, anyway, I guess we're going to have to agree to um, – This guy. Uh, this... Gallon of Truth said I'm lying a lot. How am I lying a lot? Jeremy showed crypto a lot. What are you talking about? He talked about Voyager Digital. Are you crazy? They ain't Gallon of Truth. What you own? <laughs> Jeremy definitely talked about crypto a lot. Like what? Well, I'm only yeah. defending um, Tom Nash. I, I, will, I will defend Tom Nash. I will put my name on the line for Tom Nash. Tom Nash is a genuine good guy who knows um, who, who knows his stuff, and he is not a shill or a scammer. He's not. I right, wouldn't right, do let's... business with a shill or a scammer. So anyway, what's the next all question? Right. All right, listen, guys. I'm not a bad host. The only reason why I'm a bad host right now, and I apologize for this, but there's for some reason the new setup I have, I can't look at the camera and see you. So when I look at the camera, I just see the camera because I'm using my iPad as a webcam to like make everything work. So I have to look down just to see you. So that's why it looks like I'm being a bad host, but I'm not that bad. Come on guys. You guys got to get more credit than this. Um, Tanya asked me what my heritage is. Do you remember what my heritage is? Do you remember echoes? No, I don't. I don't Cuban. I'm Cuban. Cuban. That's right. You did say that. Born and raised in Miami. Uh, echoes. Your talk about sponsorship, that's a normal thing. It's been going on for decades. You don't see the media getting sued over sponsorships. All right, bro. I guess we have to break this down again. Here we go. Somebody said Gallon of Truth is Scott. Nah, Gall- I think Gallon of Truth actually been subscribed to me for a long time. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to have to break this down. So go ahead. The thing break with it sponsorships, down. Yeah, the thing with sponsorships is I get it. You know, everybody got to make money. Like I've taken a sponsorship before. Like I completely get it. But there's a lot of factors that go into this. Okay. There's a lot of YouTubers who were originally against crypto and hated crypto and said that it was bad. And then all of a sudden when FTX comes in and offers all this money, not all of a sudden they want to shill it. That's number That's one aspect of the argument. The other aspect of the argument is you're saying that should CNBC get sued? I mean, they very well could. I don't remember CNBC sponsoring FTX. Maybe they did. I don't remember. But I know a lot of these YouTubers literally told people this video is sponsored by FTX. You know, put your money in here. Great exchange. It's safe. Blah, blah, blah. And there should definitely be some accountability for that because these guys come on the Internet and pretend to be financial experts. Yet you literally shield something that's an absolute scam. I, I think that's a huge problem. So it's more than just a sponsorship to me. That's what I think. You know, you know, debates are one thing, right? But this is not a debate. It's just a conversation. So sure. I, I, I cannot I cannot control your perception of reality, right? I can I can I, I, I just can't. I, I, I can't control the color of the lens, lenses that you see the world in and 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 your your definition, very loosely based definition of what it means to be sponsored like you literally told me and your viewers that if you are if you are <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're making a video about um crabs 
the kind in the ocean, right? Deep sea king crabs. If mm -hmm. you are sponsored by FTX, it's a crypto video. You literally said that. It's it's a yeah. If you're sponsored by FTX, you're talking about crypto in your video. Yeah, that's a crypto video. You're telling people to put their money in the crypto, and that's what they're gonna do. Yes. Yeah, I think um, so. That's that's like saying that that's like saying um, if a show on TV is sponsored mm -hmm. by Huggies diapers. That mm -hmm. that that show, which could be let let's make a freaking weird show. Um, uh, mm -hmm. let let's say the show is like um, uh, uh to, um, to catch like a predator. Like Wheel of Fortune or something. No, no, okay, to catch fine. a predator, right? Sure. Let's say it's a catch a predator show, right? But they're sponsored by Huggies diapers. Then that means, according to your logic, that that show is about diapers. I mean, that's kind of the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's like top. But that's but that's not sure. what I'm saying. These are finance channels. And you're promoting finance products on your channel. That it counts. I mean, obviously, it's not a complete crypto video. But what I'm saying is, they're promoting. No, no, not obviously, because you just said that. No, 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 no. Now you're saying obviously, and you're rolling your eyes. But that's not what you. That's that's not what you alluded to like a second ago. I mean, I mean, you're taking you're you're taking it literal. I don't mean like yeah, literally. I'm a literal the video person. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. But yeah. I'm I mean, I'm that's the only to way you. to be. Words have meaning. You. Echoes. Words have yeah, meaning. Okay. You know, okay. precision in language is very important. Why? Why not be precise when you speak? Because then there's 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 no question on what the fuck you're talking about or what you. I mean. think I think most people understand what I'm saying. I'm no, 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 no. Explaining my point pretty well. Does anyone it's, it's, in it's the does hard. anyone in the chat agree with me when I said that his logic is skewed? And then a second ago he said, "Well, you guys know what I mean." Did, did anyone catch that backpedaling, or am I the only one? If I'm the only no, one, no, it's not. It's not okay. Okay, let me let me explain it a different way. I'm ex I'm explaining it like pretty well. I think it's it's very simple. If you're a finance channel and you're promoting a finance product on your video, that's telling people this video is sponsored by FTX. Put your money in, you get all these benefits. Blah blah blah. Then yes, I will consider that to be somebody that's talking about crypto. So fine, okay. Technically, it's not exactly a crypto video. But they're still talking about crypto, and you're actually kind of backpedaling because this goes back to what you said. I don't backpedal. You literally no. said you don't listen to people that talk about crypto. Talking about FTX as a sponsorship is talking about crypto. Okay, okay, okay. So, like, you know what? Let me use active listening skills to make sure I understand you so you can't backpedal again. Okay, so I watch Tom Nash videos, right? And then let's just pretend none of this FTX stuff happened. I watch Tom Nash videos. I, I despise crypto, which is all true. Tomorrow, Tom Nash does a video on um, what the next, what, what the Fed's terminal um, fund, um, um, Fed fund rate should be, what the terminal rate should be, right? Um, but we're in a different like world, a different parallel universe. So the FTX collapse didn't happen in this universe, okay? So tomorrow, when he's talking about the Fed funds rate, he says, this video is sponsored by FTX. And FTX is blah, 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 blah. If you like crypto or Bitcoin, use FTX to get your Bitcoin because they sponsored me. Blah, 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 right? At no point there is he saying you need to do it. He's saying this video is sponsored by it. And therefore, they're paying me to talk to you. So use them if you want. Now, using your, your logic. Zelda, Zelda, shut up. You, using your logic, right? Your, your logic. N now, because of, of, of that video to, that happens tomorrow, because I have vitriol, like I despise crypto, I should never, ever watch Tom Nash again? I didn't say that. You're just contradicting yourself because you literally said that you don't watch people to talk about crypto and your friend Tom Nash talked about crypto. That's all right. I'm so so my so that's oh, how am I contradicting myself? I'm giving you an example and I need an answer. If Tom Nash tomorrow makes a video with FTX as a sponsorship and I don't watch people that talk about crypto, do I now stop watching Tom Nash videos based That'd on be a what I told yeah, you. That, I, I can't answer that. That'd be up to you. No, no, That's, okay, you're no, no. the one who I'll said make it. it easy. I'll make it easy. Pretend <laughs> you're a machine, right? And it's a yes or no. So, so I will not watch videos or people who do videos on crypto, right? Now, tomorrow, remember, you're a machine. It's a yes or no bucket answer. Tomorrow, 
Tom Nash does a, 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 an answer or, or a video on, on, on the Fed funds rate. But there's an FTX sponsorship part of it because he's sponsored by it. So do, does that now equate in your, in, your, in your robot brain? Does that now equate to saying, okay, Gabe – We'll never watch Tom Nash again because Tom Nash was sponsored by crypto. Or does it say, well, that doesn't count as a crypto video, so he could still keep watching Tom Nash? What's the answer? A video sponsored by crypto is a crypto video. They're talking so, about so, crypto. So then using your logic, I can never watch Tom Nash again. That's up to you. What are you talking? I don't care. It's up to you. You're the one who said it. What the you, heck? You know what's funny? You, you know what's funny? You're supposed to be the 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 the, the, the beacon of truth and everything, but but you are so full of shit right now. You're so okay. full of shit right now. It's so funny. Okay. You, I mean, you really are. You, you're, you're like, oh, okay. You, if you say you, so. You, I mean, you know I'm having right. a conversation. Oh no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Well, I do. Well, I just don't agree with what you said. I mean, like I said, bro, you said that you don't watch videos of people that talk about crypto, and Tom talked about crypto. That's all I'm saying. A sponsorship regarding crypto is talking about crypto. No, no. That's I, all I'm I, saying. There's a lot of stock channels out here that never talked about crypto, never promoted FTX. Because they are the real deal. They're the real people who are like, yeah, I'm staying away from that. Tom well, didn't no, do because that. They weren't, they so that, weren't, that counts. They weren't big enough. They they, they weren't big enough. What? So, no, uh, there's bigger no, channels no, no. than... There's yeah, channels like, to get way more views than Tom that didn't take the crypto sponsorships. What do you mean? I only know... You know, good good for them, but that, that well, there's a lot. That, I can name them. That that doesn't mean that, that Tom is, is evil or a shill or a scammer for I didn't say did. that. I didn't say he was evil for that. We're just going back to your original point where you said you don't... Remember, individual investor asked the question... About you saying how you don't watch people talk about crypto. I, I don't Tom watch Nash crypto videos, it. right? I don't watch crypto videos. However, okay. So I actually have a friend, a YouTube mm -hmm. friend we've never met in real life. He's a YouTube friend. His name is Adam Bergman. All right. I think his channel is Crypto Four One One. Right. But you know why I like Adam? I, I don't like him for any of his crypto crap. He will do lives talking about like economy. Or, mm -hmm. or 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 PPI and, mm -hmm. and, and and this is another guy who knows his stuff, right? So so I see value in people. So if so, like in Adam's case, I'm not gonna watch any of his crypto videos. I have literally, I couldn't care less about crypto. But Adam knows his stuff, so I, I found him because he he did um he did a live mm -hmm. on um something about the Federal Reserve. I don't remember exactly, but but. It was really interesting. So, you know, if if I said like 100 percent like line in the sand, I don't watch people who talk about crypto. I, I, I will I will take that back. I misspoke because Adam definitely talks about crypto, but I don't watch his crypto content. I am only trying to defend what you said and that faulty logic that you used about because he has a he's sponsored by FTX, that that is therefore a crypto video which didn't make sense but we we can move on we can agree to disagree echoes that's fine no you're good let me show you something real quick i got something for you okay let me show you something okay so that is a crypto video video by tom nash we need to talk about what happened with celsius and bitcoin because now that i remember tom nash actually has talked about crypto before now that i think about it here's one video right here okay boom you got me. I've never seen that video. So, okay. So then now are you expecting me to say, well, since Tom Nash talked about crypto, I can never watch Tom Nash again? Because no, I mean, that, that, that'd be small brained. That, that, that'd be small brained. I just wouldn't watch. By the way, I don't have an issue with Tom Nash, by the way. I think he's a lot better than a lot of the grifters, to be completely honest. I just, no, uh, no, no. Just, the, I, I just keep it real. That. I have a problem with that because you put him, you, you said he's, he's like, he's like, a better grifter. He's like a nicer grifter. Tom Nash is not a grifter at all. He's not in the camp. He's not on the street. He's not in the block. He's not in the state. He's not in the vicinity. Okay. Right? He, he, he is no kind of scammer at all. Did he, I, did mean, he, listen, I mean, there's no, there's, 20, no point in going, there's no point in going back and forth on that one. There really I agree. No but point. hindsight is 2020. Uh, like, if, you know, was it, was it effed up that he, that he did it? Of course. Um, but let's be honest. If, if FTX did not, collapse right if it did not collapse we wouldn't be calling him a, a crypto scammer if, if ftx didn't collapse the, the price of crypto can be wherever it is but if ftx didn't collapse we couldn't be calling and 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 the fact of the matter is like no one knew that it was coming no one no one 
How, how, in what world, how can you expect a normal, you know, YouTuber with the normal resources that we have, right, to, to, to know what was coming? Like everything was. Oh, there were a lot of people that knew it was coming. A lot. There were a lot. And warned about it. Yeah, but, I, and I know what you're talking about, but it, it was all like, it was all like theory. It, no, 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 listen. no. It was, it was legit. It was legit like, hey, this stuff is a scam. It's going to crash. I know for a fact it's a scam. <laughs> Get your money out. No, I'm serious. I can show you the proof. No, no. There are a lot of people no, who said sorry. it. I, I, I did wrong by looking at the comments again <laughs> because I shouldn't look at the comments because they trigger me because um, I'm, I'm, I need to get better at that. But but someone said something that made me laugh. They call me um, uh, um, uh, a headache in human form. I just thought that was funny. No. <laughs> that was funny. All good. But yeah. I that mean, was funny. It's fine. Um, I, I, mean, I have were, a very I mean, loud, who, annoying voice. No, you're good. There were, there were people who predicted this. And the main issue with these channels is these are supposed to be the experts. These are who people go to for financial advice. Mm -hmm. And they completely got it wrong. And now they're excused. But here's the thing, Gabe. Nope. No, I got to stop they you there. They, don't... they want to nope. take credit when they get things right. But when FTX crashes, oh, it's not my fault anymore. Oh, now all of a sudden it's not your fault. Oh, okay. oh, oh, I see what you did there. Because I too like CoffeeZilla. You're taking a page out of his book. So, so, so no, actually. No, no, I've always thought this. No, I've always no, thought no, this. No, 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 no. Because for, first off, you said a couple incorrect things there. You said, okay. you said they are the financial experts who give financial advice, right? So. God, I have such a huge problem. If if you are putting that in that camp, then you, by definition, Echoes and me, are in that camp as well. I know for a fact that you have videos that said, and I quote, the only thing you should be buying in the stock market is the S&P 500. That is advice, according to your definition, right? And depending on the timing, that could be good or bad advice. Now, is it really advice? Absolutely not. It, it is your opinion. It, it is not advice. It, it, it is not advice. You have to get paid for advice. When you go see a financial advisor, they suck, first of all. They're like, they're like car salesmen. They're, they're going to cheat you. They, they, they are the worst kinds of people. They are only going to make money if they put you in the shittiest, highest fee yielding mutual funds first of all first and foremost right so never go to a financial advisor if you really want advice you go to a fiduciary and guess what you have to do to a fiduciary you have to pay them for their time because it's not free okay so a fiduciary will give you advice by law they have to give you advice that is in your best interest by law a financial advisor does not have to give you or get you into the fund um, that 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 yields you the the most return. A lot of people don't know that. You you think it's easy to be a financial advisor, right? You got these twenty set of funds. What has the best um, track record? Okay, this one does. Oh shit, that only pays one percent. All right. Well, how about this one? Oh, this one isn't very good, but it pays three percent. I'm gonna put them in that one, and that's what they do, right? So not even financial advisors are really advisors. It's just in the fucking title, Echoes. So No, sorry, I, I, I know. Go. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I get I'm it. Too, yeah, I, I know. I'm too loud. I'm sorry. I, I get so. I, I apologize. I said before I came on here, I would have decorum. I, but I just I just get loud. Like, I do not know how to talk at this tone. I apologize. So, You're good. Do your thing. So what, what I'm trying to convey is that neither you, nor I, nor Tom Nash, nor Meet Kevin, nor anyone on YouTube, for that matter, my friend, is... And I say my friend loosely because we're not friends. At best, maybe we'll be acquaintances on good terms, hopefully. I really, I don't want to have enemies. Life is too short. Um, no one is a financial advisor, right? They're, they're not advisors. Like finance YouTube is simply a medium in which people talk about personal finance, macro environment, stocks, trading, what have you, right? I talk about individual stocks. I talk about a whole myriad of crap, really, and I don't have a big following, and, and people think I'm annoying, but it's okay because I like to have a medium to talk about things, right? I like to give them my perspective on technical analysis and fundamental analysis and what I think is going to happen, but that doesn't mean that I'm saying short the S&P 500 because I'm shorting it. Like, I'm not giving you advice to do it. You are not giving people advice when you say the only thing that you should buy is the S&P 500. 
So, so we are not giving people advice. And, and, and therefore when, when, um, when, uh, like CoffeeZilla and you, um, um, uh, alleviated or not alleviated, but, 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 but talked about the point of these people, which is a very broad statement. These people want, um, they, 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 they want credit for when they tell you something, but they don't want to take responsibility. Let me ask you something. Echoes, has anyone ever given you money because you said buy the S and P 500 and then they bought it and made a lot of money because of you. Cause you put it in their, in their head and, and, and then giving you any money. No, no, I have had picks that have made me money. Right. And if people followed me because they want to, they have also made money, but have I ever got a dime from those people? The, the answer is no. So I do not, we do not get any credit for um uh for 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 them listening to us so then so then but but in that same world we need to we need to take responsibility um for a sponsorship i mean it's absolutely asinine it, it, it's just it just it's absolutely asinine it, it makes no sense logically analytically no way you look at it does it make sense and what you just said, and dare I say what CoffeeZilla said, because he's like the head honcho. That motherfucker went on Joe Rogan, all right? So you know you're somebody when you go on Joe Rogan. So um, I just think that in this particular case, because I do like CoffeeZilla and most of the things he said, his bias is skewed, right? And, 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 he's, and he's pushing a narrative that is inaccurate, in my opinion. So what do you think? I want to bring something up by you because I actually think that what you did was actually given financial advice. But like sure, I said, you're up. here, so you're free to defend yourself. Yeah, bring it up. Bring financial but, advice. And then, and then first off, before I watch whatever I'm going to watch, define for me what financial advice is. Okay, I got you. Can you see this? I can't, I can't see if you guys can even see this. Yes. Okay, you can? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think literally what's happening right here where you say, I want everyone to follow me on this investment. I think that's literally giving financial advice. That is literally what I think. Okay. Uh, no, it, it, it's not financial ad advice. It's I want, okay. Um, what does I want? What does I want mean? Ex explain it to me. So explain to me how the, how that you're playing. You're doing advice. semantics, man. You literally said, I want everyone to follow me on this investment. That's literally financial advice. You're telling okay. people to copy your trade. Yes. I, I'm not telling people I am suggesting. Absolutely right. Not, I'm not going to back. No, pedal. no, no. You're telling them you say, I want everyone to follow no. me on this investment. That's not suggesting Gabe. It's suggesting I want everyone. I, I want okay. everyone to, to do it. I am suggesting it. Okay. So now let's okay. break this down. I'm glad you used this. So let's break this down. Do you know the premise of this specific trade? Because this is the only time I have ever posted a trade on Twitter um, that, um, that's from my Patreon. It's the only time. And, and, and the reason is actually great. And I'll give you the reason. But before I get to the reason, you are going to stand by the fact that this is financial advice based on that i said i want everyone that's that's your definition right it's literally you saying i want everyone to follow me on this investment okay and then you so have the if, investment saying sofi is a must buy okay okay uh, uh well, i no, no see you don't so now you misquoted me because i didn't say buy anything it says right here sofi is a must buy through cash secured puts there you go there yes. you go through Cash secured puts. Okay. But, that, so but get, that's still I, I, financial advice. You're giving recommendations and guidance. That's financial advice. It is definitely a recommendation. It is definitely guidance, right? Okay, I'm glad you and, said that. So yeah, let's yeah. go to the definition of financial advice. I'm so right. glad you said that. Yeah. but Because literally but, recommendations and guidance is in the definition of financial advice. Okay. So, literally. Okay. So – let, let's say it is financial advice, which I disagree, but if it is financial advice, right, um, do, do I now have to stand by that? And, and if they lose money on taking it, I have, now I have to suffer for them because they listen. I mean, if they wanted to go after you, they could. You're literally giving you're financial advice. That's okay. where you're wrong. 
that okay. no, you're, you're 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 wrong. You're you're absolutely okay. wrong. So now let me explain to you. Well, I'll, I'll let you look it up because I don't want to deter deter you. No, you go go ahead. I'm listening. I'm listening. This no, is no, a good I, one. I'm looking for it. Okay, fine. So that that play that play in particular um, echoes. But before I get into it, right? Before I get into it, do, do, and and I'm I'm not trying to call you out or, or or test you in a negative way. I'm I'm just curious to see if you actually know it because I will be impressed if you do because I don't expect you to. First and foremost, do do you know what what price to book is and what it means? Yes. <laughs> okay. Can you define it for me? Price to book, please. No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, he, he did. You know he tried what it to is, but you're not gonna time. define it. No, no, no. Okay, so you know what it is, but you're not gonna do it. Okay, fine. Well, I'll define it. So, price to book is the value of a company after their liabilities are paid, right? So, yep. if a company has a a price to book of one, that means that their 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 market cap um, is exactly what their company is worth after liabilities are paid, right? So now, in that particular play, um, if bro, you, if bro, you, what, no, let me finish. I'm almost done. In that particular play, if this you, man if, said I would be proud of you if you knew what price the book is, bro. You are so condescending. <laughs> I'm sorry if I come off as condescending. We have talked about this, okay? I, I, bro, I, I lack bro, tact, not... and I, and I do have autism. And you know this, so okay. I, I'm not using it as a crutch, but I, I, you just you just know that I am not going to be the nicest, most charismatic guy. Like, I will never be as charismatic as you. I will never have as many friends as you. Like, people do not like me at, at first, okay? No, what was that other thing you said? Last time we were on, you said something. You said I didn't know what – oh, yeah, you said I didn't know what compound interest was. Yeah, stuff like that. That's why I said. If you ask me, like, simple questions, I'm just not going to answer, bro, because it's like, all right, bro. Uh, I mean, okay. Listen, I don't want to go down that road. Fine. You you say you knew right. it. I'll, I'll believe you. So now, this, bro, what? Okay. Who doesn't know what compound interest is? Like that's the most basic of basic. That's just like price to book. You're asking me the most basic of basic questions. No, no, price to book it's is like, actually it's like, not. All right, bro. No, no, no. So, 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 price, oh, price man. to book. Price to book is not common knowledge, actually. Yes, it, yes, it is. Anybody who invests knows what price to freaking book uh, is. Uh, okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. Fine. All right. All right. Okay. Go ahead, bro. I'm um, just saying it's, it's okay. simple stuff. Like, all right, go ahead. Okay. So fine. Everyone knows what price to book. Fine. So if you know what price to book is, then, then you'll know how rare what I'm about to say is. So SoFi at that play, that particular play through a cash secured put, if exercised right there, if exercised, um, would give you would uh, would give you um, uh, in that play right there you'd get you'd get SoFi at a cost basis of of three thirty one right because you receive sixty nine cents in premium right um, remember three thirty one is your cost basis of SoFi if exercised SoFi at a at a cost basis of three thirty one let me look because I don't remember but it's it's like it's like a it's like a price to book of of point six right point six so here's the beauty of of getting a company any company and and you probably knew this because you know a lot and so do your readers right and i'm not being condescending i literally don't know how else to say this without saying it the way i'm saying it but since you guys know so much it's very rare that you can find um a, a decent stock which i've done my due diligence and i think that sofi is decent especially at that valuation um, at, at such a low price to book, right? Because the beauty of, of having extremely an entry of a company of a stock at a low price to book um, that is that even if they go um, bankrupt, right? If they go bankrupt, but you got an entry um, of the stock at a low price to book, the only way that you can lose money is through impatience by, by, by selling the shares um, before the bankruptcy and everything goes through because once the bankruptcy and everything goes through, it gets delisted, etc. After they pay off their liabilities with the remaining cash, they have to pay off their shareholders. So therefore you are extremely, you, your, your entry is, is, is extremely um, risk averse, right? You, you've taken out a lot of the risk. I'm not going to say you won't lose some money, but you probably won't 
at an entry at a 0.6 price to book. Probably, but not 100% because of the way assets are listed on the books. Like you have to take off 25%. Anyway, uh, so there. Thanks for letting me talk this whole time. Sure thing. Yeah. All right. I still think that that's financial advice, but it's all good. I disagree. All right. All right. Any closing thoughts? I think we've, think we've been on long enough. Uh, not, let me look at the comments, see if there's any decent questions. Um, yeah, everyone agrees with you. Everyone knew what price to book is, and then I am a dummy for saying that. Okay, cool. You it's, are- it's not that. It's just he's right. Like, price to book is simple. Like, like I said, I'm not saying that we know everything because I don't. There's still a lot that I have to learn, but, like, we know what compound interest <laughs> And price the earnings and price the sales and price the book is like I'm just saying, like that's okay. All. So, um, let's say, let, let's say, uh, I, I disagree because financial advice to me, my definition of financial advice is, is, is something that you can get repercussions for, right? Because it is advice given through you through a medium in which you have the investor's um, best interest in mind. Now, granted, I have everyone's best interest in mind when I put that tweet out there. However, I digress. Like by, by, by word, you know, sure, I will, I don't think I can, I don't think I can, I think it's a losing battle if I try to deny it. So I'm not going to try to deny it. My definition, I don't think it meets it, but but I, I will admit that it is completely valid for most people. Um, okay, so kingdom of finance, and don't call me bud, bro. I'm not your bud, bro. You're not, I'm not your bro, pal. You're not my pal, son. I'm not your son, kid. Anyway, um, let me ask you something, Kingdom of Finance, because you're you're another one that I don't think I can ever even count as a acquaintance. Because at, at least Echoes has decorum, like you, you're you're just a constant uh, negative troll. But anyway, I uh, again, let me ask you this: um, Who is going to sue me, and for what? Because you just reminded me of something, pal. Um, Echoes, you did a you did a video not too long ago about. Uh, people getting um, people can be sued on YouTube. I think it was for financial advice. Am I right? Was it for financial advice or something like that? I don't know. Maybe. I think, I, I've I made think, a few videos you, you about a, it. You made a video about. Oh, oh ho ho! Here we go, everyone. Now it, it turns out you can't be sued. So so actually, actually, um, you, you like. If I if I make a video and say I like SoFi because of this this and this and this is the play I'm doing and even if I go as far as saying and you should do it too you know what you need to do it you know what I want you I want you to go out and buy and do this play right now I can say all of that right and as long as everything that I said was transparent and true which means I did the play because I am investing in SoFi right uh, and, and there was no like backdoor, like fraud to it. Uh, oh, I can't wait to read the comment. I'm gonna hold off. I'll I'll read it. In a oh second. no no, I'm laughing because you're just incriminating yourself, like bro. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not incriminating. I'm put make this live. I'm definitely not incriminating myself. I'm just keeping it real, bro. You're you're absolutely giving financial advice. I can't believe we're even but, having this argument. I no, think the I, better I, thing would do would be, probably be to just take that tweet down. I mean, you're never no. gonna be sued, so it's not a big deal. But no, no, I'm definitely not gonna get, take it down now. As a if point. you ever get if you ever get really big, bro. And uh-huh. somebody can actually prove damages. That is financial but, advice. But, okay, hold on. Let me finish my sentence, and then let me finish my Go sentence, ahead. and then and then my question sure. to you is: What sure. damages? So, what damages can I possibly get? What what damages? Let okay. So let's say some. Let's just say worst case scenario. Let let's just say. Let's just make think of the worst case. Somebody buys SoFi, okay. and then SoFi goes out of business, and okay. then they lose money. They so lose all their money. You, they lose all their money that they put into yep. SoFi, correct? Yep. Right. So, yep. so now, so now you're saying because of this tweet, I can get sued. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Now, absolutely. Let, These okay. YouTubers are getting sued for technically less. Like what you're, you've done is technically you're wrong. You're, the worst. You're absolutely, no, you're absolutely is, they, wrong. They did this, I'm, I'm telling. Okay. 
Okay. You're absolutely, you're absolutely wrong. So you're absolutely you're wrong. You're literally giving financial advice. Like literally. All right. Literally. No, you're absolutely wrong. Like, unless I said do this and then I am like unloading my shares because I want everything, everybody to buy. See, see, that is fraud. That is fraud. And that is the only way. Um, I believe there was a YouTuber by the name of Big John or Big something. He was sued because the SEC found out that he was saying one thing and then doing another. That's um, a different I, charge, though. That's not giving financial advice. That's a different charge. That's just downright fraud. That's that, different. That, that, that was fraud. Like, mm -hmm. I listen, I, I don't want to stutter. And you're good. There, no, you're good. There, there is. Can we go back to so I could see your face? Oh, yeah, sure. My Can't bad. you put this in like the background or something? Yeah, I didn't know you couldn't see me. I told you this new thing. It's uh, oh, why can't I? Oh, that's weird. Oh, it doesn't look like I can do it. I have to, I have to figure out OBS because that's what I'm using. Oh, you're using OBS, but then why does it yeah. say powered by StreamYard if you're using OBS? I I'm, somehow I'm able to stream on StreamYard from OBS. Somehow I don't know. But why would I'll you stream it. on StreamYard from OBS? Because OBS, you can't pull up the comments, and I don't like that. I like highlighting the comments. You don't I have know. two screens? You don't have two monitors? I got a laptop and an iPad. Right in front of you, right? Yeah. Are they connected to each other? No, the the iPad is the webcam. The, okay, which is connected the, to OBS. Okay, so you don't have two monitors. You only have one monitor. So if you had sure. two monitors, you would simply share uh, the comments from the YouTube in mm -hmm. in the main picture. But... Anyway, um, <laughs> it's funny. No, no, really, I'm, 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 I'm laughing um, because you're, you're, you're uh, the way that you are. Literally, I, I think I, I have you ever, have you ever heard the story of the, the, the scorpion and the frog? Have you ever heard that story? No. No, you've never heard that story. I'll, I'll no. cut it really short. Long, long story short. Um, the scorpion, um, the frog yells at the scorpion for stinging them because now they're both going to die. And, and the scorpion says, I couldn't help it. It's my nature. Your, your nature um, is literally, you cannot leave it. No matter how much of a different kind of path you want to go on, your nature is just so evident. You, you like searched and dug for a tweet that I didn't even know that you followed me on Twitter because how the fuck would you know that? Cause that was like not even too long ago. So that's funny. Okay. So I caught you there. Okay. No, you didn't, so, you didn't catch me. Somebody just said that to me, to be honest, that's really what happened. Somebody DM it to me and I just saw oh, it. Like, okay. yeah. It makes sense. I believe that. I believe that. Yeah, okay. That's what happened. That's, that's fine. That's cool. Um, that's fine. Uh, so if, 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 if think about it, man, just, just think about it for a second. If you can get sued for your definition of financial advice, then no one would be on YouTube saying anything no, it's, about. No, it's not my definition, though. <laughs> okay. No, no th think about it. Your your definition is 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 telling people that they should buy something, right? Or even going as far as saying, "I like this. I am doing this." That you have said that that is even financial advice. I went above and beyond. I said, I want, right? I, I get it. I mean, I was talking to my Patreon, but that was the first thing I ever shared from my Patreon because it was such a good, like, risk-free play once you know what you're doing. But but anyway, like... Jonathan, Jonathan finally said a good comment. He said, the whole financial advice discussion is dumb. Anyone who openly talks about their investment decisions on social media will basically qualify as investment advice, but... It, it got taken. Advice. It got taken a step further. It got taken. A, I want everyone to follow me on this investment. Right. So your your definition of a step cool, further cool. is by saying is by is by saying I want. Okay, I get it, man. I get. It. I'm not going to argue with you. I, I get. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't disagree. think there's a point. I, I, I'm yeah. honestly trying to look out. I'm not even like trying to be mean. I'm just saying like I'm I'm honestly seriously trying to help. I would seriously delete that, and I probably wouldn't do that again. I, 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 You're, it's very unlikely you'll ever be sued. I highly no, doubt it, as, but I'm just saying, principle, listen, even, even, even if I agreed with you, which I don't, but even if I did, I, I, I will never delete that tweet now ever. Okay. I will okay. never delete that tweet just to fucking put my, just to prove a, 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 a flipping point that okay. I am not worried about it at all. 
like at all. So I, I hear you. And, um, you know, I would say thank you for looking out for my best interest, but I know that's not what you're doing. You just wanted to catch me. But you know what? You know what? I think overall, overall, even though I, I have seen a tinge of the old echoes today, um, I think overall your content is getting better. And I'm only saying this because my account got shadow banned and I've made comments, but you don't see them. So overall, <laughs> I want you to know genuinely um, that your, your, your content is getting better. And um, I'm not going to say I'm proud of you because what the fuck does me being proud of you? You don't give a shit about that. But, oh, I do actually. That means um, a lot to me if you're proud of me. I appreciate no, no. that if you um, are. I, I am not proud of you because you are not my mentee. You're not my friend. You, okay. You're not even an acquaintance yet. Um, but I am – this is a good word. And, and I genuinely meet this, mean this. I am impressed by your growth. Appreciate it. Yes. I am impressed by your growth. And also, congratulations on finally getting a green screen to having a, a good quality fake background instead of like your closet, as someone called it, like what you <laughs> used to do or some stuff. I appreciate um, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and congratulations on your 15% raise. I also wanted to tell you that. Oh, I appreciate that, man. I didn't even yeah. know you saw that live stream. That's funny. But yeah, I appreciate that. Yes. You just and, never know who's watching. <laughs> oh, oh, and one more thing. It wasn't, I saw uh, the recording of the live stream. And one more thing. You uh, had, I think in that same live stream, you were talking about YouTubers that you can beat up. Um, and I was praying that I was going to be on there, <laughs> uh, but you didn't put me on there. Um, so if, so and still, you know, friendly, we, you know, we're, we're, we're friendly. We're, you know, cordial. <laughs> if you ever want to fight me, I'm down. I'll come to Chicago. We could put on the gloves. It could be MMA. Okay, okay. Boxing. You don't you don't think you don't think it's kind of lame though, bro. I I literally looked you up, bro. You you were in the military for 20 years. You've done Brazilian jiu-jitsu for like 20 years. Like you beating but, me in a fight is not that impressive. How I, about I, agree. I get how about I get because I got some homies that have been fighting for 20 years just like you. How about uh -huh. you fight them? How about I get um, them and you fight them? Uh, listen. Why would you want to fight somebody who I, hasn't done I, it? You've been doing it for 20 years. No, no, like, no, no, that's no, some, that's no, some no. big shit. No, I'm just bro. keeping it 100. No, no, bro. Like, come on, I, bro. I, 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 I agree with what you're saying, that I should okay. not fight you. And let's be honest. Yeah, it's like 99.85% like never going to happen. The only reason I'm bringing it up is because you did some really petty shit. You called me geriatric. You said that you could beat me up. And then... You went on a Mitt's Discord and <laughs> started a whole bunch of like uh, uh, funny, funny drama. I, I, I get it. So, so you could see how there was some animosity. But we'll but just make sure you tell the whole story. We'll just make sure you tell the story. That original live stream we did, you threatened me first, and that's oh hell yeah, everything off. I lost. Okay, it. so let's just remember that. Absolutely. I don't ever threaten people. I'm not even that type of person. But if you threaten I, me, I I'm have... gonna stand up for myself. You threaten me. You're absolutely right. I take, okay. I take, I take the blunt. Of that episode's blame because I am older and I am the one that lost my cool. I'm telling you, you're like a thousand times more charismatic than I am. I, I cannot, okay. I will never be liked as much as you in general, right? <laughs> people, you know how people give people the benefit of the doubt at first? No, no, I, I'm the antithesis of that. People don't like me first and then I grow on them and then they mm -hmm. like me. Right. That, that's how it is for me first. And I'm fine with that. My my Christmas, I have to write very few Christmas cards. I'm completely OK with it. You know what I mean? But I, I, I just made it a point to, to say it because. I'm not going to fight you and you're right, I will get no benefit from fighting you. I mean, if and you want me I, to say that you would beat me up, you absolutely would. You've been fighting no, for 20 years. Like, that's not more, impressive. No, no. You've already said like, that. Like, yeah, you'd um, beat my ass. Yeah. Congrats. All right. God damn it, man. I can't argue with that. You, you're fucking, you're really good at, like, taking all my weapons away. All right. Anyway. I'm just saying, man, I have it, people who can, who can fight, too. So it's like, uh, you know, uh, hey, listen, I got somebody it, for it, you. Listen, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm this is the old. way that I think about it. When I brought up when I brought up the uh, uh -huh. the YouTube tier list, I tried to be fair. Like I said, I would never fight Kevin because he's too small. Uh, I don't know how tall Tom Nash is, but he's older. Like I would only fight people. Oh, Tom Nash that is older. It, it would be a me. fair fight. Tom Nash is younger than me. So you're in your 40s too. I'm 43. I think Tom Nash is 41. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, well, anyway, 
my bottom line is I think a more fair fight would be like me and like Jeremy or like me and like Chris saying, I don't know, something like that. But that was my point when I even made that. Like, I'm not saying I could be everybody up on that list, but my no, point no, is I, when you're I fighting, was... it should be a fair fight. And also, it was all hypotheticals. Like, I would never fight anybody on YouTube anyway. Like, what the heck? I, I, I actually I, have real enemies in real life. I'm not fighting somebody on YouTube. You don't have any fucking enemies. Stop lying. Okay. No, I, 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 I so, absolutely do. I know okay. I absolutely do. I'm not I'm not saying that I'm in a gang or anything, but I, I do have people. I do have real enemies in real life that stem from, like, times when I was in school or whatever that if I saw them, it would be a real problem. Like, I actually okay. do. That's what I'm saying. I, this YouTube stuff is, like, it's whatever. Echoes, I really want to say something. So, what? um. Uh, because you have done something that I would I would bet money against that you would have never done it and you did it, um, which which was basically it's hard for a man to do a masculine man what you did is very hard to do it's 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 hard to admit especially in front of people that yeah you would would me like like I would never do that like I I would I would never do that you know whatever you can call it what it is but I would never do that but. That just proves how more um, emotionally intelligent than me you are. So because of all that and because I'm genuinely impressed with the way you have, for the better, changed your content. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart and I don't, res I don't expect anything in return. I apologize deeply. I, I, I and I regret it deeply for um, the whole first time that happened. If I could reverse time, I would, right? And 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 that wouldn't happen. And I'm sorry. And um, I take not all, but most of the responsibility for it. And I just want you to know that as of today, I assure you, unless like something new pops up and there's some other bone you want to grind with me or whatever everything before today is water under the bridge and um i no longer have any issue with you and you no longer rent space in my head you you are okay with me uh we're not friends right we're not friends maybe one day we can be acquaintances maybe maybe we'll hang out and be a youtube meetup i don't fucking know anything is possible but I respect you now because I didn't before, but I respect you now. And I appreciate I that. I really yeah. appreciate that. And I apologize for my role in the whole thing, too, because I don't think it was 100 percent your fault. I think I definitely had a role in it as well with somebody instigating and somebody antics. So I apologize as well. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I think that's a good note to, to close on. So. I think so too, because oh, yeah. I gotta so go. Thank My girlfriend just walked in. So. Oh gosh, <laughs> there's that yep. issue again. The girlfriend thing. All right, oh, yeah, you um, know how it goes. Yeah. Uh, all right, and um, I guess I didn't read the comments. I will, but I don't think they were as bad today. So thank you, comment people, for not being complete trolls today. So thank you, you guys too. All right, this was fun, and, and, and like I had no plans on coming to the Echoes from Above show today. <laughs> Completely sporadic. It's all good, man. All right, man. I appreciate you coming on. You too, man. Take care. All right. See ya. All right. There you go. Me and Gabe have buried the hatchet. There's no beef. I have no problem with him. If he wants to come on, he can. There's no problem. So there you go. Any last minute things, guys? Because my girlfriend's here. So, and that doesn't mean I have to get off, but I'm getting, I'm choosing to get off so we can like watch a movie or some shit. Since Shorty Doo Wop just got back. Actually, it sounds like she in the bath right now. I could hit a water run. It sounds like she in the shower. So I guess I got a few minutes. Millennial Broke says, heart you, Gabe. <laughs> Kingdom said, bruh, echo, bruh moment echoes. How is that a bruh moment? I can't have beef with everybody. Like, Gabe actually really isn't a bad dude, to be honest. I definitely respect him for apologizing. Definitely respect that. Uh... I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm I'm growing a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But yeah, I don't want to beef with every freaking person in the world, especially if they're like not that bad of a person, which he honestly isn't. Next Echoes video, Gabe deleted the tweet. <laughs> no, I'm not going to make any videos on Gabe. No. My, video, my videos honestly are really focused on like all the drama going on with this FTX lawsuit. That's really going to be my main videos that I'm focused on. 
echo simp pill now. This person said, I just got done banging your girl. How? She's in the shower right now. What you mean? What are you watching? That's a good, now that's a good question. Um, We've been watching a show called Snowfall right now. And then there's this documentary that just came out on Netflix called Waco, where they're talking about like that crazy cold in Waco, Texas in like the 90s. Uh, I'm not too familiar with it, but I've heard about it. So I, I think that's we're probably going to watch that. Or maybe we'll just throw on like Rush Hour or something. You know, sometimes we like to go back and watch old funny movies like Rush Hour. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. You got a March Madness pick? That's a good question. Um, Actually, I don't. Uh, I like Gonzaga. That's that's the one team I like, but I really don't know. You you know what's been shocking me more? I actually really don't have a pick this year. Like I didn't even do a bracket. I didn't bet on any of the games, uh, but I do like Gonzaga. I like Gonzaga. Uh, uh, I don't know. I see Gonzaga plays UConn soon. That's going to be yeah. I really don't know. You are right about that. What's your channel, Gabe? Uh, if Gabe's still here, yeah, he is still here. Uh, he's free to plug his channel. If anybody wants to follow him, feel free. Go ahead. Gabe isn't bad. Just up. Nope. 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 We're cool. No more bad comments. Hey, you guys have to be nice to Gabe now. <laughs> no more being mean. <laughs> be mean to me, Kevin, or something. Honestly, I shouldn't have even have like beef with him. Like, like, what's the point? Like, I should, I, that's one thing I've always thought too. Like, I really need to focus my energy on like the real bad people. Yep. You watch Snowfall, Franklin. Franklin's the guy. I got something stuck in my throat. There you go. We got somebody being nice. Thank you, Gabe. Rush Hour 4 is coming. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if it's going to be good because it's been so freaking long. <coughs> What do you think about Bama and Houston losing? I think they suck. Both number one spell today. I know that's the amazing thing about college. It's it's so unpredictable. You're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Alabama lost. And then Houston lost. You're right. Yeah, you're right. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. It looked like Princeton might be Creighton. Like, isn't that crazy? Why? When did Princeton get this good? I'm literally looking at the score right now. It looks like Princeton might actually be Creighton. That's crazy. Will Princeton advance to the Elite Eight? Holy moly. Holy moly. Oh, look who it is. Hey, I've been meaning to talk to you, too. Is he really in here? Oh, yeah, he really is in here. You know what, Kevin? You know what? I don't know, man. You're 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 a tough one, man. You're a tough one. I think you think you're a good person. I don't know, man. I don't know. You're a tough one. You're you're a tough one, bro. By the way, I had no idea you even still watched my videos. I thought you hated my guts. That's good to know that you're in here because that means maybe I could text you. That means maybe I could text you whenever I uh, have something to say, even though I really don't want to make videos anymore. But I have to cover this FTX lawsuit, so I have to do that. But I really thought you hated me, though. I thought this dude was like, all right, I hate this guy. <laughs> this guy's like, I can't stand this clown. <laughs> That's the only reason why I haven't texted you. Otherwise, I would definitely text you to like get your opinion before I put out a video about you because... I do agree with Scott and, and like Spencer. I had my live stream call with uh, Spencer Cornelia, and we agreed on that. Before you make a video on somebody, you should reach out to them and get their side. I do agree with that. I think that's something better to do going forward. Ha ha, I don't hate anyone. Text anytime. Uh, me, Kevin, get on the live stream. He could if he wants to, but he's probably busy. He freaking flies everywhere and has all the stuff going on. He's probably busy. Normally, when he gets into my chat, he's normally like in the treadmill or some shit or working out or crap. So he might be doing that. Me, Kevin, hop on Echo's chat. Everybody wants him to join. I mean, if he wants to join, he can, but I don't know if he will want to join. Like I said, 
I feel like he really hates me because because of the videos I make. And it's like, hey, it is what it is, man. But there's the link if he wants to join. It's up to him. He's probably busy. I'm about to pass out. Yeah, see, he's busy. He's busy. <clears throat> you can jump on if you want, bro. Make the stream, make the stream popping. I wouldn't even say anything bad about you. I would just ask you some questions because I actually have some questions for you. People want you on echoes. But I am on. What do you mean? I am on. It's just so funny that this guy really watches my streams. You know what's funny, Kevin? I knew you were. I, I didn't know if you still watch my streams or not. But you really should have popped in that one stream when I had. I had Spencer Cornelia, Scott Schaefer, and Chris Norland all joined at once. Okay, but I can't talk about FTX. All but FTX. Fine, fine, fine. That's actually the smart thing to do. You shouldn't talk about FTX anyway because you're in the middle of litigation. Like, yeah, sure, fine. You can join and we're going to talk. We're not going to talk about FTX. Fine. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. That's fair. We won't talk about FTX because, yeah, it's wise that you don't do that anyway. <clears throat> Somebody said me, Kevin, is an admirer of yours. I don't think he admires me, but it is funny that he watches my streams. It's always funny. Let's see if he joins. <laughs> now everybody's asking no questions. <laughs> Thoughts on in phase at me, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I gave him the link, so it'll be up to him. We do not have to talk about FTX. No FTX for you. I'm going to definitely cover the case, though. You know what sucks about the FTX lawsuit, though, against, against all of them guys is the fact that they're going to have to spend a whole bunch of money just to defend themselves. That's the one thing about lawsuits that does suck. That really does suck. <clears throat> but they do have a lot of money so they can defend themselves. UGP says, Kevin, I will work for you. I'm an amazing person who needs help in LA. <clears throat> hey, UGP, tell them like what your skills are. I think, I think anybody who would want to employ somebody would want to know like what skills you have kind of thing. Or, or maybe you could be an intern. I don't know. What else y'all got? <clears throat> Bro, ask Kevin about Andrew Tate. What's the weird security thing to get on? What weird security thing? There's a security thing? You should be able to just easily get on. Security thing. Oh, I think I fixed it. Oh, no, I didn't fix it. Can you take that off? Does anybody know how to take the security thing off? I don't even know what he's talking about. Hold on. Security thing. <clears throat> Firewall, click security and privacy. I guess he's having trouble joining. I'm trying to figure out how to take the. Does anybody know what he's even talking about in terms of like the security thing he's saying? Oh, Gabe says you have to log in with YouTube email. Give me open link. Okay. I mean. <clears throat> Uh, hold on. I could try. I mean, I think you might have to log in, bro. Let me see what we got. 
Yeah, Gabe said he had to log. Does anybody know how I turn that off? How do I turn it off where people have to log in? Is there a way to turn that off? There's got to be a way to turn that off. Guests can stream by their own destinations. No. I got to figure out a way to fix that because I have no idea how to fix that. Ban guest. Here, let's try this. I'll try this and see if it works. You know what? I think I think I uh, I think I changed the setting because I kept having this weird kid that kept trolling me, but I don't know how to fix it and take it off. That's the problem. So I'd have to figure it out. I think Gabe echoes unblock GS. I'll, I'll unblock you, bro. Chat is supposed to help. <clears throat> Trying to figure out how to take it off. I have no idea how to take it off. Because I, I, I think I know what you guys are talking about. That is a show for me. Guests must authenticate. Oh, I see it. I see it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Kevin just helped me. <laughs> All right. I took it off. I took it off. There you go. So guests don't have to authenticate anymore. All right. He should be able to join now. I took it off. I told you guys, I'm like an old man when it comes to technology. Yep. Guess must authenticate. I took that off. So he should be able to join now. Yeah, yeah, I got I took it off, Gabe. I took it off. So he should be able to join now. All right. Um, here, while I'm waiting on Kevin, I'll go and block you right now, Gabe. Let me find it. I'll unblock you now so I don't forget because I'll definitely forget. X out of that. Well, guys, you all's favorite YouTuber is about to jump on. So there you go. He's got the fancy hotel. What's going on? Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, man. I can hear you. Sweet. I'm testing out this new mic, so this is perfect for me. Thank you. <laughs> You're good. What, you in the hotel room? Yeah. I, I'm in, uh, where am I? Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, I'm tired of carrying around so much stuff, so I'm trying to simplify my set. So I got myself one of these little microphones, and I kind of like it. <laughs> so we'll see how it works. Yeah, your your audio uh, earlier was a little iffy, but I mean, yeah, it, it works. accidentally went through these, and it was terrible. Uh, and I didn't even know until like ninety percent through my videos today. Uh, but but this should be better, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, it it definitely sounds better. Nice. Okay, okay so we can't talk about the situation. <laughs> we'll have is, to talk is... about different situations. <laughs> it's there all go. good. <laughs> I don't even know what to ask. Um, that was one of the main things I want to ask. I guess the other thing I can ask is, how's the plane going? It's good, man. It's, how's that uh, going? I mean, I mean, keep it yeah. real, because I I have my suspicions of what I think is going on, but just keep it real. No, tell me what, what, tell, what are your suspicions? <laughs> You're welcome to ask. It doesn't bother me. You can ask anything you want. Yeah, I just think, uh, I mean, I made a video about it like a while ago. What did I call it? I called it like, what happened to your plane or something, because you stopped talking about it for like a while. And then you said that you like were having issues with it or something like it was in like maintenance, but 
I, I guess the main thing is like, are you still in a position where you can easily afford it? Like, yeah, I mean, I, I can float all of our payrolls and the plane and house hack and everything by myself if I wanted to for 10 years, uh, you know, where we are right now. So I'm, I'm not really worried about it. Uh, I think uh, long term, though, uh, the, the goal is to use the plane as a tool to make money, right? You don't want to spend all your money and have nothing left, right? You want to make money. So the goal is to make money. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're fine. All right. <clears throat> Question for me, Kevin, what is this quarter performance on house hack and PP stock? Well, uh, I don't know that you can really judge performance on house hack uh, with, because, you know, we're, we're not really operating yet beyond scouting, uh, which is really fun. Uh, it's a lot of work <clears throat> because I prefer to just be in the studio and make YouTube videos. But, uh, well, I don't prefer that. That's just what I'm used to doing. Uh, I actually do prefer going out and meeting with, with realtors and exploring real estate. I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm now on my, within the last like year to date, I'm probably on like my 90th flight right now. So it's a lot of traveling. Generally, I prefer day trips, but uh, lately we've been doing this where we've been going to the East Coast. And what we'll do is we'll go, for example, this last trip we did, we went to Fort Worth, Dallas, then we went, or Dallas, Fort Worth, as they say. Then we went to uh, Atlanta. Uh, we were just in Atlanta, and we just landed in Charlotte. Uh, and then we'll we'll hop back tomorrow, and I'll uh, spend some time with family. But so so in terms of uh, recon for house hack, I think it's been fantastic because we've flown so much. Uh, I mean, the, the fact that we can compress so much into so little time is is incredible. Uh, yeah, I mean, PP I think is doing very well. I think we're almost at the level where we can have options for PP, which is kind of cool. Uh, once you get to twenty five <coughs> mil AUM, I think we can put a request in. And just today, actually, we hit twenty three million under management under PP, which is pretty cool. So we're excited about that. Thank you for asking. Did you see that live stream I did with Smith Cornelia where Scott Schaefer and Chris Norley came on? Um, I think I may have seen a clip just where Spencer was with you. Um, I don't remember all four of them or all three of, well, all three of them and all four of you. Uh, no, but if there was something interesting, I'm happy to add commentary to it. <laughs> Ask away. Yeah, that, that live stream was hilarious. We just all went on there and then Chris Norland just duked it out with, uh, just duked it out with, uh, Spencer for like 10 minutes. It was pretty funny, but what, are, I mean, what are your thoughts on Chris Norland? What are your thoughts on Scott Schaefer? I don't know, Chris. Um, uh, Scott, I, I think he's good. You know, I think he, he does his research. Uh, you know, I think he's fair. Uh, the, um, was it was the other? It was just those two you asked me about, right? And and Spencer, you know, I've met him in person once or, or twice, no, a couple times. Uh, I think he's a great guy too. So I think he's wonderful. Uh, Spencer basically considered you to be a friend of his. How come you never talked about mm. his lawsuit, or have you ever offered to help him financially? Because I know for me, if my friend was getting sued and I had the money to help, I would I would help. Just a question. Yeah, I don't. I I mean, well, that's wonderful. Um, uh, and, and really, I really appreciate him saying that. Uh, that's that's really nice of him. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, if we were local, and in fact, every time I go to Vegas, I'd be happy to hang out with him. I should hit him up, and uh, because I go to Vegas pretty often now, it's pretty easy because it's it's only like a fifty minute flight, which is really fantastic. But um, yeah, uh, I, I, Spencer mentioned it to me when we met. Boy, maybe a year ago, or maybe even a little bit more than a year ago, and it, it, it sounded like he was going through hell with that. I mean, it's, it, lawsuits are just cancer. It's uh, it, it's sad, but uh, you know, if you have insurance, uh, knock on wood. Hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, your 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 pain is very limited. <laughs> okay. Now it's interesting because I, I made another video about you, like maybe like a few months ago, where mm -hmm. you talked about Logan Paul's lawsuit. <clears throat> But I made a video because you threatened to sue me at one point. Was that a, a joke or were you actually literally going to do it? I, I, I've i never sued anyone in my life and I really have no intention to. You know, I think uh, I, I think, you know, things happen in, in the world where people feel like somebody's really trying to screw somebody else. And then and then people sue. And usually what ends up happening is uh everybody's just trying to do the best they can is at least my opinion. I mean, unless you're like a Sam Bankman freed, it was just straight up fraud. But beyond that, uh, you know, I think everybody's just trying to go through and do the best they can. You know, I, I know there are a lot of lawyers who make a living out of filing lawsuits. And I mean, if I was a lawyer, I'd be doing that too, but no, I have no intention of suing anyone, uh, even going for like, 
I, I, that's just not how I roll. I, I, it's, it's not worth the time. Uh, the time is the punishment, you know, it's not, it's not money. It's, uh, it's just even thinking about all the garbage associated with it. But, uh, you know, fortunately with my new schedule, I have lots of time, <laughs> but that doesn't mean I want to go around suing people <laughs> because I don't, it's just, it's a nasty, nasty system. I actually think it's one of the most broken things that we have in, in America. We should just, lawsuits should be, everything should be arbitration. I'm like, all right, y'all are complaining. Take it to arbitration like a, a Judge Judy and, and it's handled over a weekend. <laughs> It'll never be like that because you'll, you know, all the attorneys will lobby against that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty anti that whole system. Yeah, talk about, you know, I've always wanted to ask you this. So since you're on, I'll ask you, what was it actually like? I assume you probably went through hell when this happened, but what was it actually like getting sued by both Greg Cardone and Dave Ramsey? Because I don't think you were nearly as wealthy as you are now. So I assume that was probably a really tough time for you because I think most of your money was in real estate anyway. Yeah, I mean, I I prefer not to talk about really either of them, but uh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll say uh, I'll say uh, I, I the Cardone one was uh, was was entertaining, uh, you know, because uh, uh, I was sued for uh, quote unquote stalking him, which requires uh, an in person interaction with him, and what he sued over. Uh, was when I delivered flowers to his office dressed as an elf, and he wasn't even there. So it was the most laughable lawsuit ever. But uh, I think uh, there's a lesson in that because even though it was laughable, uh, they were able, they have an in house attorney. So, and there are no filing fees for filing a stalking lawsuit. So basically, gotcha. their net cost was zero, and mine yeah. was $40,000. <laughs> so that was you the know. next question I was going to ask you. So that's yeah. how much it cost? For just for you to defend yourself? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they got the last laugh on that one, but that's okay. I still delivered flowers dressed as an elf. <laughs> was... Yeah, well, yeah. why did you do that? Uh, you know, I, I, I started hanging out with... Um, so, it was, it was a really interesting time. I was uh, very a very new YouTuber then, and I was very impressionable, you know, to some degree. Uh, that That's very difficult anymore today. To, I, I have... My, my opinions and the way I like to do things. But then I was I was very convinced that I needed to do what other popular YouTubers were doing. And I was actually in uh, the Mr. Beast, uh, one of one of Mr. Beast's videos, not as a primary character or whatever, but I was there helping. And, uh, you know, I was in some of the shots. Yeah, it was like a circle challenge or whatever. And I met a lot. I, I basically I hung out with all these pranksters uh, and uh, and Danny Duncan and and uh, visited Danny in Florida and, and some others. And really, I thought, oh, you, you know what? You know what finance needs? It needs entertainment and drama. <laughs> Let's go some drama. Uh, and, and so, you know, in, in like I wouldn't go back and change anything in hindsight uh, because I, I think everything happens for a reason. Uh, good, bad, whatever. Um and, and it, certainly you don't wish anything bad upon anyone. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I look back now and I just laugh about it. I'm like, oh, I, 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 would I do it again today? Absolutely not. Would I recommend somebody do that? Absolutely not. Would I go back and change it? No. <laughs> but, you know, now I just laugh over it because it was so ridiculous. Was there, a, uh, was there a situation? We know about the flower situation, but was there another situation where you, like, storm Grant Cardone's event with a bunch of people, with a bunch of signs or something? Did that actually happen? Well, that, that was the same event. So the the okay. thesis the thesis was, uh, I, I mean, I'll never forget. I thought it was hilarious. We we were a bunch of elves and we came over with wagons and bullhorns and delivered a bunch of flowers. Like the idea was just to kill them with kindness. Uh, and uh, when when they, uh, you know, I mean, said, okay, put the flowers out here in the parking lot and we're outside. Uh, that's, uh, that's, I think when, uh, yeah, you know, some of us, if I, yeah, we, some of us had some signs and stood by the windows, like take our flowers. Uh, but I think the funniest memory of that for me was the fact that, uh, I remember the, uh, one of the security, well, the only security person came out uh, and he yells, who's in charge here. And <laughs> three of the people with me look over and go, Santa Claus. And of course, I wasn't dressed as Santa Claus on purpose. <laughs> it was just so hilarious because we were just able to kind of keep dicking around, basically, and being little immature idiots. But uh, yeah, I mean, so I try to I try to look at the the humor in it, but obviously, uh, you know, I, I I wouldn't encourage anyone to do that. <laughs> okay. Are you? Uh, have you talked to Graham Stephan or Jeremy at all? Have you repaired whatever 
happen with you and Graham? Are you friends? Do you talk? I, you know, no, we, we, we don't talk. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know, I think it's, um, you know, it's, uh, what I've, what I've noticed, I think, in, in the finance space is a lot of the finance YouTubers, they do really well kind of just doing their own thing. And I think everybody's kind of just gone in their own direction. Uh, I think uh, millennial money could have evolved into something a lot better. Uh, I think if we took a little bit more of the style of like the all-in pod where they come prepared with research and set mm -hmm. topics and a set order, I, I think we could have, we could have actually uh, created something uh, really incredible. And we could have been one and two with, with the all-in pod. Uh, we, we never took that diligence though. I think we, we were never, and, and I'm, I'm equally to blame for that. Uh, so I, I think if somebody were to go back and do that and try to compete with the all in pod, you have to have segments you're going to cover. Everybody sort of thinks about those segments and it's actually a priority. Whereas it, it felt a little bit like millennial money was like, all right, let's get this over with. And then, and then it was, it, uh, we, our conversations generally devolved into, well, our general theses, which were at some point in my opinion became predictable so i think um i think that that's unfortunate i think that was a missed opportunity and uh, i i wish i could go back and have uh, motivated some more change uh for the better on on that uh is there a possibility that millennial money channel can ever come back because that channel still exists right he just deleted all the videos right or did he completely delete that channel do you know i have no idea uh i have not logged in for over a year uh so i have no idea but um you know could it come back i doubt it um yeah i i i i suppose i would say i doubt i, I wouldn't say no i don't imagine i i would be a part of it uh i don't think they would want me to be a part of it but uh if they did um yeah, I, I suppose it would take a very different structure for millennial money to come back, uh, but I doubt that it would happen. Okay. Uh, just in general, um, uh, you know what? I'll ask it anyway. If you don't want to respond, then just don't, but I'm just going to ask. Yeah, ask anything. Uh, don't feel like you have to have a filter on. See, I got the pop filter. I, I, filter. I know, but you said don't talk about the lawsuit, but I'm just going to ask this. If you don't want to answer, fine. But just what are your thoughts about BitBoy and what the – plaintiff's counsel is saying about some of the things they're alleging that he's done i have no idea what's happening uh i i you know somebody came up to me and said hey there's something going on i'm like i don't care as far as i know there is no lawsuit until i get served and uh, i'll you know keep it to that point okay so so what happened was basically they wanted to do like a status conference like they put bitboy in a specific own category because they're alleging that He's like harassing them. Like they're saying he called them 21 times in a matter of 45 minutes. They're saying he emailed them. He's tweeting horrible things about Adam Moskovitz, who's like the main lawyer behind a lawsuit. And people like me think that it makes you guys look bad because you guys are for the most part shut up, except for you. We don't call Pizzillo, but that's a different story. But I, I, it, he's making it look worse. He's making it worse for you guys about what he's doing. So what's your kind of your opinion on that? Because he is involved I in the lawsuit. He's one of the defendants. Yeah, I, I don't know the guy. I don't know what's going on. So I, I really couldn't comment on it. Okay. So that, that rules you out as one of the people that was on the phone with him. Because he made a video where he said he talked to one of the defendants and they were scared or something. So I'm wasn't assuming me. that wasn't you. Okay. Wasn't, wasn't you. Me. All right. But Man, I can tell you, I, I don't have a DUI. Yeah, you got a reckless driving charge now. Yep. That That I admit to. Yeah, and uh, how how did how did that happen again? You, I guess you went on Scott Schaefer's channel, and you said you think that it happened because I guess the judge got tired of people who don't like you emailing them or something, right? <laughs> didn't I happen? mean that's possible. I mean, I you know I look at it. I I look at the whole situation. I look. Uh, I, I say, look, great, uh, um, great lesson. You know, be careful, respect the roads, don't be a clown. Uh, you know, follow the rules. I was clowning around and, you know, I ran the stop sign. I saw the stop sign and I'm like, who puts a stop sign at the end of a highway? This is stupid. It was just like, it was reckless. So I, I, I deserve that. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think, uh, the outcome is actually extremely reasonable. Uh, you know, I think I had, had, Knowing what I know today, uh, uh, I, I would guess I would probably was like a 0 0.01 on the 
uh, in terms of BAC. So I, I really think uh, I think the charge uh, was correct uh, and a reckless. Uh, so no Dewey uh, regarding Schaefer. Yeah, there was there was a comment made essentially that the uh, judicial system seemed a little overwhelmed with the attention that this was getting, uh, and and it almost felt like. They almost felt like somebody constantly was nagging them, basically. And they, they were very relieved when it was over. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I would imagine it, it potentially helped. Uh, oh, if we just, you know, if we offer this to Kevin, maybe the emails will stop. And I'm like, All right. Well, either way, I think I think the right outcome came of it. Okay. Uh, ask me, Kevin, why you left Creators Agency. Yeah, the, based on the information I got, it looks like you left. Is that true? Um, no, I, I, I would, I probably wasn't the best customer of theirs. So I probably take some blame for, for not, uh, uh, not being, um, uh, part of, uh, part of that group, uh, anymore. But I, I, uh, we, we stopped working together probably, uh, June, somewhere around June, I think something like that. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Um, here's another question from somebody. Can you confirm what Kevin's cost basis is on Tesla and how much his portfolio is down on paper since re-entering the market? You know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, uh, I actually, one of the things that I teach is, is purposefully not uh, being aware of uh, your account. Don't look at your account on a daily basis. Don't look at your cost basis because I'll give you an example. One of the things that people do when it comes to investing in stocks is they will, let's say you buy, I don't know, I'll just make up a number. Uh, let's say you buy, you know, XYZ stock at $100 and your cost base is $100 and then it goes to 80 you feel bad. Uh, now, the right thing to do is say, well, average down if you still fundamentally believe in it. But now let's say you do, and your average is now $90. And now it runs to $200. But you actually think this is a $400 stock. Well, guess what happens? People who think about their cost basis, they go, well, darn, you know, if it's at $200 now and my cost base is $90, well, if I start adding shares, my basis is going to go up. But wait, you think it's worth four. So if you think it's going to double and you think it's worth more, who cares about your basis? Get more of the quantity that you own. So I think the the worst thing that you could do in, in investing is is constantly pay attention to uh, your your prices, your cost basis. Uh, and that's not to say your purchase prices. It's just say your, your historical prices. I think the best thing you sh everybody should do is look at their portfolio uh, – every so often and say, do I still believe in these companies long term? What are my targets and where do I want to allocate new money? And I'll give you an example. Today, I think that the uh, um, I, I think that Enphase has a, a better forward peg ratio, for example, than Tesla. But now uh, bo and both of them have an equal and, and, and seriously equal recession risk ahead of them. So um, but yeah, you know, I, I that's that's my POV. So I, I have no idea. I, I really, and I don't care because that means I have to sit there and constantly update all these averages and stuff. I don't. It, it's not something I do, and it's not something I teach to encourage. Okay. Well, I remember I texted you privately, and I still never got an answer. Was there any point in time where you were down ten million dollars in Tesla? Uh, well, I doubt that because I took uh, many millions of dollars of gains last year on Tesla. I was offset by some losses on uh, a firm specifically. Uh, you know, I, obviously, the, even though I sold that in January of 2022, it would have been, in hindsight, better to have timed that maybe a couple months earlier. But uh, you know, as they say, hindsight is 2020. So I doubt that. I did have a lot of taxes to pay last year, but uh, fortunately, uh, the jet was a was a little uh, sort of get out of jail free uh, card for taxes. Uh, so uh, that worked out. So how much were you down on Tesla one time in 2022? I have no idea. Um, okay. I mean, certainly a few million dollars, certainly, but but I, I don't I don't I don't know how much. I doubt it was. Uh, <laughs> I doubt, doubt it was negative 10 mil, but who knows? Right, but you also don't know. I haven't gotten a definitive answer because, like I said, when I made that video, we literally like added up all your trades, and there were people in the Discord that like assisted with that and. 
And it was somebody who came to me with this. I didn't even have any idea. Somebody in your Discord told me this guy's down $10 million. And then we added it up. It, it kind of added up to it, man. I mean, that's an honor. That's awesome. I mean, maybe when it was down at 104, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's so what? Uh, like, like I say, you know, it's, it's, uh, are, are you, are you in it to, to try to sit there and look at the chart and go from top to bottom? Or are you there for a fundamental purpose? Uh, what's your vision and, and then hold to your conviction. So my conviction is, uh, hold pricing power style stocks. And, uh, ultimately, uh, probably a lot of my holdings will end up in, in, uh, my ETF. Uh, and then, um, after that, uh, I think house hack is, uh, you know, could, could be on the path to a many multi-billion dollar business. So I'm very excited about that. What's a, uh, what would you recommend or what would you say is a good growth strategy to grow your channel on YouTube? Uh, you know, it's, it's challenging right now because in finance, I think growth is a little restricted. I mean, I think if somebody were to start fresh today and have no preconceived neutrality or bias, probably the easiest way to grow right now is, uh, uh, like right wing Fox Tucker Carlson style commentary. You could even go anti Trump commentary and go left. Uh, it's very difficult to do that in the middle uh, because it just doesn't get the the shares and therefore the viewership. But politics uh, is is uh, huge right now. That edit that you had a very well edited video that you posted i think today actually maybe yesterday i'm sure you know what i'm talking about it has something to do with like housing or something uh did you have an intern that did that did you pay somebody to do that so we have an editor he does a very fantastic job he works really hard he um he does all of sort of our house hack vlogs which we don't know how many more of those we'll do we'll probably transition more to that edited style that you saw okay Looks like he had to sneeze. Bless you if you had to sneeze. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. All right. This is uh, Dan Weston has a question. Uh, okay, so the question is, admit you panic sold your entire portfolio in Jan 21. Well, he means Jan 22. Uh, and no, it, it wasn't panic. It was, um, uh, well, first of all, you have if you actually go through my videos you can you can actually and, and people have identified this by actually going through those as like a learning tool they'll go through my videos starting around jan 5 22 and you can start seeing my concern evolve uh and it's really it really started with the federal reserve becoming extremely aggressive when they realized that inflation wasn't transitory that's when they u-turned that was around January. That was around December sixteenth for the Fed, but we didn't know about it until January fifth. Uh, you could type into YouTube, "Meet Kevin," worst Fed report ever. Uh, it's a fantastic video. It's like a fi fifty-five minute live reaction, and and you could see the surprise in me. So uh, I do what I always do, and and I do the same thing now. And uh, then, then I double and triple down, and I study. And so I must have read a couple hundred earnings calls in the span of the next two weeks. And I was absolutely convinced that we were on the path to a wage price spiral. I went to a JP Morgan dinner I was invited to, and a JP Morgan banker was there. And uh, I, I said, we're, we're screwed. Like, this is horrible. Uh, everything's about to crash miserably. And, uh, and we should not get back into the market until the Fed U-turns. Uh, and, and, and a wage price spiral is going to take hold. And, and I gave them my data and sort of dates and everything. And I remember uh, this person who actually used to work at the Fed, who now works at J.P. Morgan as some chief strategist or whatever. He's like, "Well, you know, what what what's your base case for recession?" And I said, "70 percent." And uh, that was in January of 21, or sorry, of 22. And uh, he said, "Oh, okay. Well, that's where we're different. We're at 15 percent." And so, sure enough, you know, o o over that month of January, of of all of these these meetings and the realization that, oh my gosh, people don't realize this yet. Uh, I, I don't think it was panic. I actually think it was perfect, uh, perfect, uh, nearly perfect timing. I mean, a few stocks could have been sold a little bit earlier. November of 21 would have been perfect when I actually started shorting Kathy Wood. Uh, not because I don't like her. I actually love her. I just thought the valuations were high. But uh, anyway, uh, that was that was ideal. But uh, look, I didn't play it perfectly, you know, but, but uh, do I describe the actions that I do as panic? Absolutely not. Uh, before I sold, I, I not only shared 
all of my theses for weeks with the people around me, uh, with Lauren, uh, with, with professionals. And, and ultimately, everybody came to the same conclusion once they saw my map and my roadmap for what was likely to happen, uh, which much of it much of it did. Uh, unfortunately, I got back in too early. Uh, that's my fault. You know, that's the problem with trying to time the market is you have to do it twice. <laughs> you know, you have to do it on on the uh, out and the in, and, and that's very challenging. So, so do you uh, admit that? Do you admit that during that time you actually did try to time the market? Because it sounds like you're kind of admitting well, of that course. now. No, I mean, I mean, I, that was never a secret. Uh, my video when I announced that I sold, I said it was a bet. Right. I, I said, this is my market bet. And I actually talk in that video about the macro cycle and how I think we're at the top of the macro cycle. And even if I'm not perfect at getting out of the top, I think I can get in closer to the bottom. And I, I think I probably if we had sort of a circle, if I sold a little bit past the top, uh, I probably got back in like halfway through the drop and I still had the other half to ride. Right. And it's not perfect because I sort of staggered in. But uh, but it's 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 okay. I think I made the right decisions. I think it was a uh, it was um, I did the best that I could with the information I had available. I think uh, you know I'll never forget selling my real estate when I did. I sold. Uh, you know, people always say, "Oh, real estate isn't liquid." Well, I sold twenty three properties worth you know over twenty million dollars in uh, the span of what three months. Uh, really, real estate quality real estate is actually extremely liquid, and uh, I still remember thinking uh, the people who were lining up to view the homes that I was selling and thinking they didn't even know what we're going into, uh, and and I almost felt bad because I knew prices were going to come down, uh, and and so sure enough they did. Now of course you know we're kind of like okay, well what are reports saying now? Well well now the hundreds of earnings reports I read and the earnings calls are are saying. There is no more pipeline inflation. It's, there is no wage price spiral. Uh, that's all over. That's gone. And so to some extent, uh, inflation will prove to be transitory. The question now is, how much is the Fed going to screw us before they believe it? <laughs> so we'll see. Okay. Another question, is Kevin still standing strong with Scott Adams? I didn't even know you were doing that. Is that true? Uh, Scott Adams, the comedian. Uh, well, I, I don't know what standing strong is. Uh, I think if you're asking, like, is there is this binary? Like, do you defend or not defend? I think Scott Adams uh, was, uh, if I remember correctly, if I watched maybe a couple hours of his thing, his, his podcast, it seemed to me like he was making sort of an exaggerated, uh, you know, hyperbole. Uh, 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 and uh, to me, it, it, it didn't seem like he was uh, being racist, but, uh, you know, then again, I mean, if, if his intention was to be racist, then of course that's wrong, but I didn't gather that was his intention. But then again, maybe, maybe I think too highly of everyone. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say from what I remember, I didn't pay attention to that story too much, but for what I remember, his comments were racist. If I remember correctly, the, the clip, I'd have to go back and look, but yeah, from the, what the, I, the clip was but, terrible. So, you know, the, the, there was maybe a two minute clip that circulated on Twitter. And I thought to myself when I saw it, I go, gosh, that's that's terrible. I mean, that is racist. That's atrocious. Uh, and so that's why I watched about two hours of his content, because I wanted to see, like, this person's getting canceled. I mean, rightfully so. But why is why is you know, why are some people saying, no, it's not what you think? And so I thought, well, let me just watch all of it. So so I did. And I personally came to the conclusion that it was more likely to be hyperbole and, and just exaggeration than uh, than true racism okay uh, i'll ask my own question how do you deal with all of the you're probably a pro at it now because 2022 was rough but <laughs> how do you how do you deal with all of the hate that you get online whether it be on twitter youtube because I, I i still see it when i'm on twitter or youtube and it's funny it's not even intentional because i don't even think i follow you i don't think i do but Somehow, some of these like big you, some of these big Twitter accounts still talk about you, or say something <laughs> about you. So, just like, how do you deal with it? Uh, you know, it, to to some extent, it, I guess it means you haven't become irrelevant, right? <laughs> it's just to some extent, it's. I mean, like, think about it. People, people hate Taylor Swift, uh, and and she's she's amazing. I, I love Taylor Swift. Uh, she's an inspiration to me. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know, I guess, uh, I guess you're just always going to offend some people and, uh, you know, just wish them well. And, uh, I mean, sometimes it's nice to know what the negative commentary is so you can respond, uh, when, when necessary, but most of the time it's, uh, it's just not necessary because it's just nonsense. I mean, 
you know, people people get mad at me, for example, when I say, you know, I think GameStop is going to go down. This this rally that it had after earnings is ridiculous. And, you know, then it goes down 16 percent and, and people are like you caused it. And I'm like, whatever, man. <laughs> you know, so I just give my perspective. And if you want to hear it, great. If you don't like it, leave your nasty comment. Uh, but at least you're coming back to watch, <laughs> you know, so get my perspective and leave. It's fine. Uh, do you? Yeah. Do you think that? Um, do you think that a lot of the hate you get is fair on social media? Do you think it's actually fair? Um, I mean, it depends. Do you, do you think uh, you played a role in it? Well, sure. I mean, like nobody's perfect. I mean, everybody can go through everybody's failures, and I mean, the more you do, the more you screw up, right? You know. I mean, there's. Uh, it, it, I feel like I'm working three jobs. And so I feel like I make three times as many mistakes as somebody who works one job. You know, that's not saying that's like, Oh, look at me with three jobs or whatever, but it's, it's just, it's just, that's what I signed myself up for. So yeah, there's, there's always going to be more to hate, but uh, yeah. So of course, I mean, like if I didn't exist, there wouldn't be any meet Kevin hate. Right. So of course, to some extent I'm responsible. Okay. I have a really important question. Um, I should have, I should ask you about this too. And you actually responded to it. You didn't mention my name, but you responded because it really upset you. Uh, but I'm giving you a chance here to defend yourself and talk about it. I personally think that when you came on my channel back in July, you kind of alluded to the fact, let me remove this comment. You kind of alluded to the fact that you kind of was sketched out by FTX and you kind of knew like what was going on with like uh, some of the BlockFi and whoever crypto CEOs that came on your channel. And I made a video basically talking about that I personally felt that you knew. And I just want to hear your opinion about that. I think what you're referring to is uh, me talking about uh, the advertising. And uh, I was surprised because I was so convinced we were going into a recession uh, last summer. I was surprised that anybody was still advertising, uh, any company. Uh, I remember thinking in... Uh, in March and April, uh, I was, I remember being on a run, uh, somebody was going running with me and I was talking to them, I go, oh, what's going on with sponsors? And, and they're like, oh, it's slowing down. And I'm like, oh, 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 see, I knew it going into a recession. We're probably in a recession now. It's like the recession just doesn't come that quickly. I mean, one, one thing I learned over the last year is everything happens a lot slower than you think it will. <laughs> and I couldn't, couldn't be more true, but no, I, I, I mean, other than, than thinking like, why why spend so much money going into a recession other than i mean and, and for me i'm like well if we're going in a recession and they're willing to spend money or whomever is willing to spend money it's like okay let's just work harder how can we do more content and provide more value for people to integrate sponsorships in or whatever uh, because i thought it was all going to go away i thought all youtube income would go away you know i i was i was pretty bearish on the whole market so i i thought the recession was just going to take everyone out yeah, but in that same interview, you did make a comment where you said you literally said uh, when you did the interview with the crypto CEOs, you literally said, like, if you look at my face, Kevin looks a little sketched out, which just makes me think that you, you kind of saw at least uh, maybe you didn't know. I'm sure you didn't. But I think you really saw that um, crypto was kind of not, not scammy, but just kind of sketched. Like the fact that you were on an interview with the CEOs and you're saying out of your own mouth that you were sketched out by it. You yeah. know, that just makes I mean, me think, yeah. like, why did you even promote this stuff in the first place if you were sketched out way back in 2021 when you did the interviews? Yeah, I, I was never sketched out by brokerages. I, I invested in the brokerages and I lost a lot of money in them. Uh, I was always concerned about uh, Tether and USDC and, and, and stable coins. Uh, and if you go back to my uh, Titanic videos of uh, of the beginning of the recession, uh, I, I in in my video... I uh, you can see stable coins collapsing uh, like the smokestacks of the Titanic because it, I, I thought they would depeg and they would collapse. Nowhere in the video do you see crypto brokerages, and and that's because there's. I thought there's no way the brokerages would go. I wasn't. I wasn't going to envision. I couldn't have envisioned a bank run, even what we're seeing now. Uh, it's the last thing I thought would have happened. I mean, 
you know, Tether still exists, damn it. <laughs> you know, it's like it was the opposite happened. I was t- totally wrong on that one. I mean, to some extent, some stable coins obviously went away. You know, this is the Terra Luna fraud and all that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I got caught way off sides on that one, man. No, man, I, I thought the brokerages were fantastic. Uh, and I thought there there were some fantastic features at some of the brokerages uh, for trading. But uh, but yeah, the, the oops. <laughs> For sure. Forgive me. Um, I can only see you when I actually look at my laptop, believe it or not. I got an issue with my iPad. So if you see me looking down a lot, it's because I'm trying to look at you when you're talking. Just no uh, just FYI. Um, somebody wants you to talk about Hex, which I think you did have him on your channel. But I heard a little rumor that they about to start going after him. That's what I heard. Really? Oh, um, I saw it. On, I saw I, it on Twitter. Appar- apparently, they're about to go after him. That's what I heard. It could be completely wrong, but I saw it on Twitter. I didn't see anything official. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that. Mm-hmm. I still remember my interview with him. It was nice that he came on my channel. Yeah, but it looks like you all have a little bit of a beef going on, from what I saw. Saw you all talking about each other on Twitter. I saw. I see it all, man. I saw it all. Got any comments? Not really. I, I don't hate anyone. I think Twitter's a cesspool, man. It's uh, everybody. Everybody gets so pissy at everyone. I, I I really dislike it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right. I don't know if anybody has any other questions, but I think that's everything I can think of. That's all you there's, got. There's man. been a there's been a lot, man. I, I guess I'll just I'll just keep asking. I'll just ask the bold questions. How do you feel about the videos I make about you? How do you feel about the last few videos I made about you, if you've even seen them? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe remind me of, is there a particular one? I, I... You respond to some of them, so you clearly saw some of them, because you literally responded some to them. them. I have, yeah. What's, what's something? I'm glad you're honest about it. Plane? Something about plane? Um, I don't think you talked house hack. It's, uh, well, I, I mean, FTX, I just, I just don't watch that kind of stuff, and I, I try to stay away from that. Um, so really plain house hack. I mean, what else is there? And I, I feel like I'm not entertaining enough. I got to be more entertaining to give you all more content to talk about. <laughs> Just how do you feel in general about the videos I've made about you? Because obviously I've made a lot about you and I'm very critical um, of you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, uh, I, I think probably because your audience demands it, uh, potentially you're a little aggressively negative. Uh yeah, uh, there's a, there's a lot of uh, potential jade, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe, I don't know. that's just my take. What do you think about Spencer and Scott Schaefer telling me that my channel is not going to grow because I make the same videos on the same three people? Um, I mean, yeah, there's a limited audience for that, so they're probably not wrong. This dude keeps asking about creators agency. We already talked about that. He's not with them anymore. We already talked about it. Kevin pretending like you aren't living in his head. I honestly don't think I live in his head, but I definitely think he pays attention to what I'm doing. I, I at least sometimes. Like if I have a, I th- I think that if I have a video of you with the thumbnail of you in it, you watch it. That's really what I think. Yeah, there you go. Do you two like the All In podcast? Uh. I guess I'll go first. I mean, they give good information and they're cool, but I mean, they've really made a holes of themselves recently with this bank stuff. I wish they would just shut up. They just, <laughs> they just look like arrogant freaking assholes. I don't know, like especially that Jason Calacanis guy. So I would say I like them. I would say I like them before they started running their mouths on Twitter about this bank stuff and just acting like jerks. That's just my opinion. Why does like nobody the, like, like Jason? Bunch, He's He's always he's always the butt of the jokes. It seems, <laughs> poor guy. Because he's because he's Jason. He he makes but me he's ashamed to be a Jason. Aww. He's a good host. He's a good host. But man, he's putting us Jasons to shame. He just needs to shut up. Aww. He just he, okay. I'm I'm gonna just keep it real. I'm gonna be honest because that's just how I am. I think out of all of them, he brings the least value in terms of like actual like knowing what they're talking about about this stuff. And I feel like his role is to just be the host. And honestly, just I mean, you could talk, but just just shut up on Twitter because he says a lot of stuff on Twitter and he has no idea what he talk what he's talking about. It's just so frustrating. And I know I'm not the only one who feels like that. There's people who are really smart and really know what they're talking about. And they're like, dude, shut up. 
like he said something crazy. He posted like a meme or something. And there were like all these like verified startup founders like, dude, take this down. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Like, he's really something, man. So that's my opinion. Got it. Got it. I would say overall, their show has a lot of value. So, uh, you know, as with every show, they'll grow through and fix uh, fix problems. They do They do seem to care about what people think. So they, they adjust. Kingdom says he needs his Kramer indicator. Oh. Ask him if he likes in face. I need my Kramer in the care. You gotta admit that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean it it's it, it, it Kramer gets a lot of attention from from the inverse, but I think it's fantastic because oh, to some extent, uh, you know, uh whether it's positive or negative, he's getting attention. <laughs> Yeah, but but he's directing it at you, and you know some of you guys are indicators. I'm not gonna lie, that's why it's so funny. Oh man, oh man, I'm sorry, man. That was just funny. All right, yeah. uh, how long is House Hack willing to hold off before buying any property? What if real estate remains elevated? Will investors' money stay in treasuries? Well, uh, it depends. Um... So our, our thesis is uh, we're likely to have a lot more clarity by uh, the second quarter to set up for buying in Q3, Q4. Uh, if that time is not deemed to be appropriate, then we'll wait. This guy wants to know, what are your thoughts on the Andrew Tate arrest? Do you think he's guilty or do you think he's being framed? I don't know. Uh, you know, I... Uh, See, there, there are two parts of Andrew Tate. Uh, one is the the motivation, right? The the Tony Robbins style, like get off your ass and work, and and uh, you know get hard style, like, and that's that's motivational for for especially uh, younger dudes, uh, and, I, and and I think that part is great. I think the uh, I think that uh, he was able to take uh, wealth and and attention uh, and and uh, turn that into. Uh, uh, attracting women uh however that is then devolved into i think him believing that uh because of his wealth and attention that uh, he can treat women in in ways that i think are inappropriate uh and you know some people say oh consensual this that i, I you know i think i think people i mean women to some extent probably know what they sign up for when when, when they you know get involved with andrew tate but uh i think unfortunately the message that ends up being sent to young men across America is this is how you treat a woman the way Andrew Tate does. You know, you walk around the house with a sword because you will demand they cook in the kitchen or do your laundry. Uh, I think that aspect of Andrew Tate is disgusting. Now, do I think he's guilty? I don't, I don't know. I mean, we'll see what the evidence shows, but uh, yeah. Uh, so, so it's a, it's not a, it's not a yes, no for him. <laughs> it's a two sided answer cool are either of you two firearm owners uh i definitely am and i'm pretty sure kevin is too but he can speak for himself that's a secret <laughs> there you go well i definitely am how did you hook up with peter schiff and how has he influenced you you ever watch his occupy video yeah, his Occupy video is actually how I ever first discovered him. But uh, yeah, vi visiting Peter Schiff was uh, remarkable. Was, uh, uh, visiting him in Puerto Rico was fantastic. Uh, you know, I, I mean that that uh, visit to Florida and Puerto Rico was so incredible because I went from Peter Schiff to Ben Mala and Kathy Wood in the span of three days. It was it was an honor. Um, so it it, it uh, sort of reiterates uh, all this all this traveling we're doing. But uh, it's it's so fantastic. Uh, and, and I'm very excited about it. But yeah, I mean, Peter, we sent him a message. Hey, can we do an in-person interview? And he was on board. So it's fantastic. We've done interviews, of course, on the channel before, too. Yeah. How did you meet with Kathy Wood in person? Did you have to pay for that? No, of course not. Okay, you never know. How'd you meet up with her? Because, I mean, people like that, normally you got to pay. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, well, probably because I've... Uh, you know, I, well, first of all, I have great respect for her and her team. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Uh, any uh, any of the ETF folks, uh, their researchers that I've worked with before, 
uh, in interviews have have just been so phenomenal. Uh, Yassine and Crypto, uh, Brett, uh, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, the research that he does. I mean, these these are really just brilliant minds, and, and I don't know how she finds these folks, but uh, hats off to her. So that was actually one of the things I asked her in person. I go, "How do you do that?" <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, it was it was it was uh, surreal. When you talk to her, does she ever? Did it ever come up of whether she's actually like seen your videos or watched your channel before? Yeah, she knew the allocations in my ETF, and she knows I'm on YouTube. So, <laughs> okay. yeah. Uh, I don't know if you think she's a good or bad investor, but I guess a better question is, do you think, do you think she's like ruined her credibility because of how bad she's performed over the last like year? No, I, I think she's been very consistent. You know, she's, she's never made her, uh, her strategies a secret. Uh, she's very clear with, uh, what her mission is. I think she is uh, redefining how she's presenting her portfolio, and that's very smart. Uh, you know, I, I um, one of the things she adopted just over the last couple of weeks, which which I was very happy for, is uh, she has a counter now, a very good counter to this idea that oh, she invests in in money losing companies is what people always say about her, and. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, she's she's made this fantastic counter argument and, and she's right to make this. She says, look, if you actually look at our companies, they have enough cash to, on average, in our portfolios, last them six years. So let them grow. Let them invest. And and so she's she's doing a great job. I mean, she's staying consistent. Uh, you know, her her uh, strategy is not uh, in vogue right now. So, yeah, there's underperformance. But. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I don't respect her any less. And I don't think her credibility has changed because she's always been transparent about the strategy. <laughs> she hasn't changed her strategy. It's good for her. She's sticking to her guns. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry, my camera went out. I think we're good now. No worries. Okay. Um, Gabe says, can YouTubers be sued for giving financial advice? I mean, anybody can be sued for anything. Uh, you know, I, I don't yeah. think that YouTubers... So it's it's really important to remember what financial advice is, right? And I think uh, I think everybody misconstrues this. Uh, and so financial advice is really when you, the way I like to picture it is, is is when you go to a doctor and you say, hey, you know, I have this I have this pain, and the doctor says, okay, let's diagnose your pain, let's look at your portfolio, let's look at your problems, let's try to figure out what your goals are. Okay, your goal is pain management, your goal is therapy, whatever. Let's think about some solutions for how we can get to you to your goals. Really, financial advice should be personal in nature, right? It's just like going to a doctor. You know, it, like if, if you said, hey, man, I, you know, I got this pain in my, my knee, uh, I'm like, oh, you know, I once had a pain in my knee, you should do this, this, this. It's like, who am I to do that, right? I mean, even if I was a doctor here, I, I'm not qualified to do that over uh, the internet, I, I believe. That's why I don't like Teladoc. <laughs> uh, but anyway, point being, uh, I think when I think financial advice is is one on one, full portfolio review, uh, allocation suggestions for pay, right? And that's what financial advice is is uh personal financial advice and and that's the definition of the sec that's the definition of the ftc the, the uh, you know um, trade commission so uh no i i really don't think uh, anybody would have any standing in arguing that somebody gave them personalized financial advice when when they didn't even ask for that right somebody watching a youtube video isn't asking for personalized advice they're looking for perspective uh, and if i say hey man you know i got a really great up and coming stock i think this is a phenomenal idea i'm investing in it y you know if if you hired me since i am a licensed financial advisor if you hired me and said hey love that pitch really great hey i want to pay you for a consult here's my portfolio uh how much do you think i should allocate to that and then if I effed up, you know, that allocation or whatever, well, well, then, yeah, there would be some liability because that's what, well, that's A, what errors and emissions insurance is for. And, and, and B, you know, you're hired to try to help them achieve that goal. And if you don't perform in that job, then, then you haven't performed. Uh, now, uh, you know, making a suggestion on YouTube is, is uh, I mean, it, quite frankly, it's just, it's just a misuse of the definition. It, 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 just by the very, the, the legal definition of financial advice is not what people provide on YouTube. So uh, it's just a definitional difference. So no. 
Very interesting. Okay. Where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? <laughs> well, I mean, you could ask me that five and 10 years, five or 10 years ago, and I would have had <laughs> an answer that, that did not align with reality whatsoever. I mean, five years ago, do I think uh, at the beginning of 2018, uh, you know, uh, uh, when, when I had 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, do I think that in five years I would be, you know, having the privilege of uh, flying around on my own plane and, and, uh, and, and leading a startup for, uh, for a real estate venture that, you know, I think could be worth many billions of dollars in five to 10 years. No, I have no idea. I mean, much the same now, I have no idea what could happen. I mean, how that could be a fantastic and great success or not. I, I don't know. I have no idea. I, but I, I do know, uh, nobody's going to work harder at making sure it's a success to me. So I'm just going to work hard every day and whatever happens is what happens. Fair enough. Appreciate that. That's interesting that you love both of us, but okay. <laughs> and what has happened to you in the past week? How is your mental health? And are you taking care of yourself with Jim getting outside? That's actually a great question because you actually like you're all over the place these days. So, yeah, it's hard. It, it could be tough to take care of yourself and work out and stuff when you're freaking got a start up and a plane and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I uh, I have a lot of allergies right now. I don't know why. I was going to Texas and and uh, Atlanta and then here, so I'm like super red in the eyes. And the so that's a little annoying, but I don't think that's really comes down to a health thing because that'll go away when I'm back in Cali. Uh, yeah, you know, California's been so wet. I haven't been going on runs, so that's been very frustrating to me. I you know I try to go on the treadmill to uh, to replace that, but then again, like you said, with traveling, that's a lot harder. So. Uh, it's been less less desirable um, than than I ideal, but uh, you know you do what you got to do. I eat healthy every day uh, and uh, continue to do that. Yeah, take it from there. Oh, people ask some really good questions. Good job, guys. These are good questions. Uh, this yeah. one: Have either of you used Chat GPT in your work life? If so, how so? Uh, I'll go first because I did use Chat GPT one time. Uh, I, I definitely don't want to use it for work, but I just. I'm like, you know what? Let me see if this thing could actually do my job. And I tried it and it was horrible. This thing cannot do my job. Uh, for every for those who don't know, I'm a compliance officer for an insurance company. So I'm literally just reading laws all day. And I typed it in like I literally typed in a law and just basically told Chap GBT, just interpret it. And it couldn't even do that. So I was like, okay, yeah, my job's not in jeopardy at all. Well, you go ahead with yeah. your opinion. I, I, I feel relatively similar about it at, at this point. I mean, I think in the future it'll be a lot more useful, but it's it's just yeah. not there yet. Yeah, I agree. I actually think it's a very overrated. Like, it's cool. Like, it's it's a better version of Google. But for me, I've used ChatGPT a few times, and it's, it's very inaccurate in a lot of what it does. Like, yeah. if anybody thinks you're going to be able to use that to, like, make YouTube videos or provide news coverage, you're, you're going to end up giving inaccurate information. I would be very careful with that. But I do agree. I think in the future it'll be good. So maybe Jet GPT 10 will probably be the one that can do all the cool stuff. But we're just not there yet. We're just not yeah. there yet. Uh, this is a question for you, Kevin. Where do you think finance YouTube is heading? That's a great question. I would love to know. Yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, I, I think um, hopefully for the better, you know, I think uh, everybody wants finance YouTube to continue to evolve. I think it's very immature at the level it is now. And you know, I think in the future we'll see uh, we'll we'll see finance YouTube is uh, just as um, useful as potentially Barron's or the Wall Street Journal in the future. But that's going to come to more diligence, potentially licensing, potentially here you know all our citations and sources and oversight. So, you know, I think a lot of that is coming and is probably needed. What do you think is the future of what Joseph Carlson calls? TMZ finance channels. So basically me, strong man, everybody made a video about him. He got mad. So my question to you, not, not that specific situation, but just what do you think is the future of the TMZ finance channels like me, strong man, Chris Norland, Scott Schaefer? Well, it depends on how well the finance channels are doing. Right. So think about this way when, uh, you know, gosh, maybe before Trump announced he was running for president, Nobody really cared. So anyone who was purely dedicated to talking about Trump wasn't getting a lot of attention because Trump wasn't doing anything. So if the person you're talking about isn't doing well, 
then then there's no point. You know, it's you, you're not going to grow. If the person you're talking about is exploding, well, then it's a lot easier to grow with them. So, you know, ironically, the best thing for finance TMZ is uh, is finance uh, the finance community growing. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. That's what I needed to hear. <laughs> yeah. Keep talking about the big guys. Yeah. Uh, can Kevin get Jeff Snyder on the Me Kevin show? I don't even know who that is. I don't either. Yeah, okay. Will you care if TikTok is banned? No. Yeah, I think we're both older. Like he's in his 30s, I'm 28. We we don't nobody gets on TikTok our age. Like it's cool, but that's for kids. Uh, okay. Well, this is a great chat. Um, yeah. Sorry, guys. I actually got to go. So there yeah. you go. No, no it's perfect. Probably one more, but yeah. <laughs> I, we'll I pick it up. It. Thanks, man. Yeah, there you go. Appreciate it, man. We'll see you. All right. Thanks. I'm cutting the broadcast off, guys. So see you later. Thanks for joining. Hope you guys got all the questions and everything you needed. And uh, yeah, peace out. I got to go. Goodbye. Bye-bye.